Here. Mr. Joyce. Here. Mrs. Evans. Here. Notice is hereby given that Scranton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, August 16th at 5.30 p.m. in Council Chambers, Second Floor Municipal Building, 340 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. The purpose of said public hearing is to hear testimony and discuss the following. File of Council number 49 of 2012 amending the revised recovery plan for the City of Scranton pursuant to the Financially Distressed Municipalities Act and authorizing the Mayor of the City of Scranton to issue an order directing the implementation of the revised recovery plan dated August 1, 2012, attached hereto as Exhibit A in accordance with the provisions of Section 245 of the Financially Distressed Municipalities Act. In response to citizens' requests for additional participants and in light of the collaboration among the Pennsylvania Economy League, Mayor Doherty, and Scranton City Council, we asked Mayor Doherty, Scranton Business Administrator Ryan McGowan, and Mr. Dominez, Policy Specialist for the State Department of Economic and Community Development, to attend tonight's hearing. Before I call upon the first speaker, Mr. McGowan will present the most recent adjustments to the proposed plan, which were completed on August 15, 2012, and Council Finance Chair Frank Joyce will elaborate on them during our regularly scheduled Council meeting. I ask that all Council members would reserve their comments until the fifth order motions portion of tonight's meeting in order that as many citizens as possible may be heard prior to 6.30, at which time our regularly scheduled city council meeting will commence. Any Scranton resident who is unable to address us during the public hearing due to time constraints may speak during the citizens' participation portion of the council meeting. At the conclusion of tonight's hearing, Mayor Doherty will provide brief remarks. Please silence all cell phones, refrain from private conversations, and step away from the podium when the bell rings so that all speakers receive an equal opportunity to be heard. Phone calls and conversations should be conducted outside council chambers. Mr. McGowan, please begin. Thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes. I would first just like to say thanks for the last few weeks of, of the collaboration. I think um, we've come up with a, a very good, solid plan moving forward, and I especially want to help uh, or thank Mr. Joyce and Mrs. Evans for some of the numbers that you have provided with this, um, so forth. I think everyone has the mandate sheet in front of them. If they don't, I do have some copies here. Um, we could just start with uh, 2012 and talk about the estimated revenues and expenditures. Um, at this time, um, with the debt uh, refinancing uh, unrealized of about $2.9 million, we were looking at a deficit of around $7.7 .7 million, uh, along with the carryover last year of close to $9.4 million worth of uh, deficit. Uh, our total deficit for the prior two years is about $17.1 million. So going forward uh, here with budget initiatives with this, uh, with the mandates for the recovery plan, obviously we've already approved uh, the $9.85 million of unfunded debt uh, that was approved in January by Scranton City Council, and we are currently hoping uh, in the next few weeks to uh, work with uh, some type of financial institution to receive those funds. Um, we are additionally looking at another uh, $8.9 million worth of uh, unfunded debt for this year. Uh, Six million would be attributed to the uh, cost overruns with the budget at this point. Uh, 2.9 is due to the unrealized savings from the uh, debt service refinancing. Um, the $1 million loan from DCD, along with uh, a DCD grant of 750000 Obviously, we've uh, discussed that initial, the initial uh, amount was suggested at 250000 and we are going to speak with DCD and PAL about reworking the numbers of asking additionally, not for any additional funds, but for some more greater flexibility in the $2.25 million that the, uh, the state has so generously offered us. Um, 
with that, uh, we have a couple other cash outflows that we'll need to go through this year to, to end the year. The first is the workers' comp. Obviously, we used that back in April to, uh, to fund a payroll. So we need to put $1.5 million back in there to be at the suggested level that the state has required us to be at through labor and industry. And then the additional costs of bringing the firefighters uh, back in April of this year through June would be around $200,000 from June forward, uh, we had the safer grant cover the cost of that. Um, with those uh, budget aspects done, we would come, come to the end of the year of a, a surplus of around $1.6 million. For 2013, uh, the suggested deficit would be at about $2, $2 million. Um, we are hoping to see um, some work done at Geisinger and some other places that would increase our operating revenues through permit fees of close to a million dollars. Additionally, the city will be putting out an RFP for uh, third party fees associated with construction in the next few months that should net the city somewhere uh, close to three hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, with that uh, operating revenues up, obviously, as I stated, the, uh, the deficit looks uh, close to $2 million. When you take in the surplus from the prior year, um, we're sitting at close to around a $400,000 uh, deficit for 2013. Looking forward in 13, um, we've spoken with DCD and worked on the number of the commuter tax at $2.5 million. Uh, the city uh, administration and council will work together in going to court uh, once this is approved to, um, to get the co commuter tax to move forward. Additionally, we're looking to raise the real estate tra transfer tax to 2.9 percent. That would see an uh, increase of about $185,000 a year. Health care savings with the, uh, the approval of the fire and police contracts, and they will now be making a, uh, a, uh, a, um, a contribution to health care along with the city putting out the new um, pharmacy uh, RFP, which this week has been in the paper, we're uh, proposing a savings of around $815,000 for next year. Uh, the amusement tax uh, for $200,000, uh, pilots for 1.3, uh, the increase of some other, all s other small licensing and permits fees will net us around $185,000 the increase of BP and Merck back to the level it was in 2010. Uh, the municipal base revenue opportunities for $353,000. We're looking at department expense reductions of $500,000, along with the uh, sale lease back borrowing of, of $5 million. And then the parking enhancement uh, program that we're waiting on uh, proposals back at this point for around $700,000. Less in the cash outflows, you have the uh, repayment of the unfunded debt borrowing A uh, for $1.8 million, the repayment of the unfunded borrowing B for close to a million dollars, the repayment of the DCD loan, uh, the $1 million loan we are hoping will be put over 10 years and we will pay $100,000 a year for 10 years. Uh, the additional borrowing for the uh, Supreme Court award for the fire and police along with the sale leaseback debt service will cost the city close to $1.5 million. And then the additional cost of the pension obligation, uh, the MMO, at $5.1 million. With that uh, going forward, we'd have a surplus of about $2.3 million, an additional real estate tax increase of around 12% in 2013 would take place that would, re that would net us around $1.6 million to have a surplus of $3.9 million. When we jump to uh, 2014, obviously, we see the expenditures uh, do increase to a high level due to debt service, along with other um, you know, incremental costs. Uh, the, or the deficit is roughly at $10.9 million. With a surplus from the prior year of 3.9, we're looking at a $7 million deficit. Um, in 14, the commuter tax, we would hope, as we are approved, since it would be a year in existence, would uh, net, us or net us $4 million. Uh, the only other changes similar there are an additional, uh, uh, an additional uh, savings of $850,000 in health care as opposed to eight fifteen dollars and thirteen. dollars The additional fee in the pilots of another $650,000 that would net us $1.9 million. And then additional uh, 
revenue with the municipal-based revenue opportunities, along with additional department expense reductions. At that point, the parking meter enhancement program, we would look to net $1 million. The cash outflows are pretty much the same, other than the fact that the $700,000 will be the end of the SAFER grant in the middle of 2015. So for half the year, we would have to cover the costs of those 29 additional firefighters. It is the hope of uh, the administration and council to work together. Um, we are aware of individuals at that point who may be able to retire, so we will work with the department on seeing if that is a possibility for additional cost savings as well. Um, the uh, net deficit at the end of 14 is about $8.1 million. An additional increase of 44.32% uh, of real estate taxes would net us $6.9 million and leave us a net surplus of $447,000 in 2014. When you carry that surplus over to 2015, uh, the total deficit would be $10.9 million. Um, additionally, we will hope to continue to have the commuter tax, additional savings within health care, which is what we talked about prior, uh, increase of pilot fees to $2.4 million, uh, also increase, increase in department uh, expenditure reductions, along with the parking meter enhancement program going to $1.3 million. Debt service would stay the same for everything. The only other thing that would really change is a full year of additional firefighters at $1.5 million. That takes us to a net deficit of $11.2 million, an additional tax increase of 12% in 2015 for another $2.7 million will leave us a net surplus of $68,000. So in total, um, over the three-year span, if the sales tax is not achieved, we were looking at a tax increase of 68.56%. If the sales tax is achieved, we would be looking at 35.89%. Thank you. And thank you. Our first speaker tonight is Andy Spiraglia. Andy Sprague, citizen of Scranton Fells, Scrantonians. I read the audit report as well as this recovery plan. And we all know the figures don't jive and will not jive. When you talk about health care, way back when, when they retired, I don't know, somewhere around six, uh, maybe 91, 92, somewhere back in there, they had a buyout. And we bought out so many police and firemen were allowed to retire <coughs> with full-time health care for the rest of their lives. Okay. That, in turn, is one synopsis of the, your health care costs. The other synopsis, of course, is the active employees on it. Now, how do they expect to get all their savings, other than the fact is when a person reaches 65, goes on Medicare. It's true, they go on Medicare. But we're still responsible for 20% of that. Now, the medical cost will still be there, unless they get on some kind of a don't help plan, which I doubt. Why would they want to take something that's less than what they got? So we're going to be stuck. And we're not going to save a real amount of money on health care because some costs are going to continue to escalate, and there's no way out of it. That's just one part of it. Now we got added debt coming in from different authorities. Now, true to me, the Helton isn't worth $2 million to us, the taxpayers of Scranton, nor the county building. But yet we're obligated because of those two garages to come up with $2 million. Is that right? No, it's not right. And the whole fiasco in the very beginning on that deal, I, I talked about many, many times on it. The original Hilton people were supposed to build their own garage. We weren't supposed to give them free parking for life at the cost of the citizens of Scranton. Now, why are we paying for them to have free parking at the Hilton? That's added to the cost. That's going to come in with this $2 million that you're stuck with. 
And you can keep going to these different projects. They keep talking about this project or that project. None of them projects have really bought a lot of money to relieve the taxpayers of Scranton. All they did was sink us deeper and deeper in holes. I looked at the figures. They're right. If everything goes like in the audit, we would be like $30 million in debt in the next couple of years. So obviously, we got to have a tax increase. The problem is how much of a tax increase and how many of these things are going to become fulfillment. He's already talking about taxes going up from your estimate at 33 to 58, maybe 57, maybe even 100 percent if they don't go through. This is true. We may end up with a 100 percent tax hike when all, if all these things don't come through. And they're down there talking about a commuter tax. Oh, yes, let's get them commuters. They're already paying something. Their companies are paying for them, too, with the products they produce. That's taxed. So they're actually a benefit to the city. And here we're trying to tag them with the things that we have done wrong. And that's not right. And as far as the sales tax, I tell you, here's another thing. You go through with that. That's not the way to go. If you want to really do something, get down there and try to get that school bill tax passed, where the state would take over all the funding of the schools within the state. That would free up a lot of money that can be used to f fill the holes in our budgets. That's the way to go, instead of making everybody in this community, this county, mad at us. I'm hearing a lot of static saying, why should we bail you out? What have we done? What have you done for us? And the truth is, they did very little for us. All the malls are, of course, out of the city. Anybody who wants to come in the city don't want to come in the city. How many people left the city? You talked about Verasso. They left. They got out. And the reason they got out? Because whatever they did down there in Old Forge, it's... They could pay for it what they had to pay Scranton in taxes. Well, my company moved out of Scranton. That's what he told me. Well, no sense going into it. I'll Thank we'll you. Talk on it. Thank you. Matt McDonald. Hi, good evening, Council. Good evening. My name is Matt good McDonald. Evening. I'm Vice President of the International Association of Firefighters Local 60. I'm um, coming here tonight just to um, publicly let the uh, entire council know that um, our union is opposed to some of the non-financial aspects of this plan. Um, as Mr. McGough, if you would hear, can, can tell you, um, for years we've been meeting with um, PEL, and more recently at the uh, meetings we have... Um, brought up issues that we have with this uh, recovery plan. Um, a lot of the issues that we have, um, uh, you know, issues with involve um, firefighter safety, the public safety, um, stuff that is being um, eliminated from, from uh, you know, how we operate right now. Uh, we're also concerned with some of the management rights um, that strip away some of our uh, basic uh, labor rights that we enjoy and have enjoyed over the years. So um, um, last uh, Monday, I believe, I wasn't able to attend the PEL meeting. Um, uh, other members of this union uh, brought up some of the con concerns to uh, PEL, the state, and um, Mr. McGowan. Um, uh, I believe they ran out of time, and they will, we will be bringing the rest of our issues up to um, at the meeting next week. Um, I believe it's on Monday. But um, like I said, we just wanted to come here and um, say that um, a lot of these issues that have nothing to do with the finances of the city, uh, moving the forward city finance, uh, financially, um, it strips, like I said, a lot of our safety rights right now and our uh, basic labor rights. And, um, we, and again, just um, want to publicly state that we are um, opposed to those issues in the plan. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Faith Brannis. Faith Brannis Granton. I'd like to thank Mayor Doherty for coming today. I really appreciate it. I think it's very, very nice, and I'm grateful. And it shows that he really cares about the people in the city. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. I'm sorry to see that PEL isn't here, or DCED. This is what it's all about. I, I want to thank council and mayor for, for working together and getting this recovery plan as low as possible for the taxpayers. I know you've worked very hard, Mr. Joyce, Mrs. Evans, and Mr. Doherty, and Ryan McGowan. Thank you for that, because you've been looking out for us you know, to bring this tax increase down as much as you can because we can't afford it. Now, when I see PEL's plan, they, when they rejected almost everything you said because it wasn't reasonable, they were like blackmail. It's like, you either do what I want, we want, or we're not going to give you the $2 million and the $250,000. To me, that's like extortion. It's like, they could take that and shove it. If they had their way, they would just take everything, every debt in the city and put it on the backs of the taxpayers. They've been here how long? 20 years to get us out of distress? They haven't done one thing. They've gotten us deeper in debt. And I wish they were here to hear this because this is what they've done. They should be gone. They have never helped us. And DCED, all they've done is, and, and Pell, this fireman and policeman union contract, they took it right to the Supreme Court. They never wanted the mayor to negotiate. They just want keep going, keep going, keep going. We'll win. Well, they didn't win. And where are we now? $30 million in the hole. So as far as this recovery plan, I hope, I hope you stick to your guns and don't fall for this bribery. Uh, you do what they want or else. Because look at their track record. What have they ever done? I wish they were here so I could have asked them, what have they done for the city besides bury us in debt? I mean, where are they when we need answers? That's about all I have to say, and I want to thank you again for all the hard work all of you have done. Thank, Thank you, you Mayor Dory. Marianne Wardell. Good evening, Council. Good evening, Good evening. Dory. Um, before I start, this gentleman, and I don't know who he is, he's a photographer, he has a camera that's extremely loud. And when someone is up here speaking and he's clicking that, we can't hear what anybody is saying. Maybe he could wait while we're speaking and take pictures after. Yes, council would appreciate that. Um, for the past 10 years, this city has borrowed and sold assets to meet their financial obligations. Now we're in a position where we can't borrow anymore. Banks don't want to give us money. We can't meet our payroll. We're taking from, well, workings comp, Workingman's Comp we borrowed from early in the spring. Our vendors are suing us. I would say that this city is bankrupt, and I think your recovery plan is unrealistic. I think when you can't pay any bills without having to borrow, when you're talking about a recovery plan that's going to give you a still a deficit year after year after year, you are bankrupt. This recovery plan to me is very unrealistic. You are counting on revenue that has not ever been materialized yet. You are looking to people that have never donated money to us before, and you're counting on them giving us millions of dollars. They don't have to give us a dime. They don't have to give us anything. We're looking at a 1% sales tax. You're looking at, you think, millions of dollars. That has not even been passed. That's got to be passed. This. This recovery plan has not done enough to cut expenses. There are a myriad different ways that you could cut expenses that, are not, that have not been explored in here. And I think this recovery plan should be put on a ballot and you should let people vote on it and decide if they want it. Or maybe you want Harrisburg to come in and appoint a receiver, which would increase taxes immensely, but you know what? With this recovery plan, you are not going to see the revenue that you expect to see, and we're going to wind up paying more in taxes anyway. So I would think very carefully about this before I would pass this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Ozzie Quinn.
Ozzie Quinn, Scranton Taxpayers Association. Good evening. Good evening, Good Mayor, evening. Mr. McGowan, City Council. City Council left holding the bag. Uh, you know, you got to see farther than your nose in the situation, and, and I have to support what Andy had said before, and that's regard to Senate Bill uh, 1300 and House Bill 1776 now in Harrisburg legislation, which has to do with the elimination of school district taxes. Uh, the school district, we pay 58% of our taxes towards the school district. If we could eliminate those school district taxes, uh, and it's on the sales tax, as a matter of fact, okay? And it's getting a lot of approval across the state. And uh, if we could eliminate that school tax, I mean, we could possibly afford a little bit of a tax or something to, to, to start this recovery plan. But right now, we're just stuck. Let me, let me just give you an example, okay? I went Tuesday night to a, a public hearing, the Scranton Sewer Authority, on the uh, impact of the combined sewer overflow on a community, a 25-year plan, $140 million. Now, I asked that uh, uh, the uh, Gannon Dawson, Mr. Barrett, were up on the stage. I asked him, you wouldn't notice if you, if you weren't there or if ECTV, because the Scranton Times didn't cover it. Even though it was a public hearing, $140 million of people's money, okay? Now, I asked them, uh, I asked them, uh, uh, Mr. Barrett is here. Is the City Council, is the City Planning Commission, is the Dunmore Planning Commission, is the Lackawanna Regional Planning Commission going to review this $140 million project? No. Why? I'll tell you why. Because when the mayor got off the hook with Anglo American, when he pay back the what same the contract, what he owed Anglo American, he at that time on May fifteenth of two thousand and seven said, as I quote in the Scranton Times, that the Scranton Sewer Authority is now autonomous. They don't have to go to anyone to raise their rates. What do we have? We have anarchy. You know, we are saying your vote counts. My vote don't count. I don't want an appointed official of that man telling me what my rates are when he's dumping people down there for job after job after job. And for since 2001, he's had the support of the Scranton Times, financially supporting his campaign and distorting everything that come out of here. At one time, there used to be a newsman in a newswoman in right here in Station in City Hall to Mayor Doherty came. Then it went gone by, okay? Everything they do, they distort or they hide. They hide. And this is what the problem is today. Now, Mayor Doherty arbitrarily took upon it himself to say, the heck with the Home Rule Charter. I'm the king. Here's what happens, okay? You look at the Home Rule Charter, Section 502, which was voted on by the people. Okay? And it says, in addition to other acts, there are 17 acts that has to go before the city council for ordinance. And it's required by law or by specific provisions of this charter to be done by ordinance. These acts of the city council shall be done by ordinance. Number one of the 17, adopt or amend an administrative code or establish, next word is the key word, alter or abolish any city department, office, or agency. He altered the Scranton Sewer Authority all arbitrarily without coming back here for approval. And for the two last rate increases at the Scranton Sewer Authority, you people did not review them. And who did it? Appointed officials of this man who has put us in the worst fia financial fiasco in the history of Scranton, and thanks to the Scranton Times and the electronic media who does nothing about it, but the electronic media reacts. They don't proact. Now, what do we have here in the Scranton Sewer Authority? We have, boy, excuse me, I did go to uh, what same uh, uh, paralegal school, de facto privatization, okay? Because we don't have, you don't have, the voters don't have any control over the Scranton Sewer Authority. 
How are you going to ever control what's going on here in City Hall? Thank you, he Mr. He screwed Quinn. up the Parking Authority. He screwed up the Sur Authority. He screwed up City Hall. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Quinn. Um, I think just quickly I want to clarify something because I, uh, I was seated on City Council when uh, the, the uh, return of the Sewer Authority to, uh, let's say, home base occurred. Uh, there, there was never a vote taken because uh, only two of three entities had to approve that. And the three entities would have been the City of Scranton, the Borough of Dunmore, and the Scranton Sewer Authority. And I attended meetings with representatives of the Sewer Authority and Dunmore, Dunmore Council, and it actually was the vote of the Dunmore Council and the Scranton Sewer Authority that caused the turnover. Scranton was not required to vote at that time. It, was, it became irrelevant because the other two insisted that this is what was going to occur. Uh, our next speaker is Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council, Mr. Mayor, Dave Dobson. Uh, okay, uh, I've done some basic studying on the fine points, uh, and I'd like to suggest, uh, and especially with the mayor here, we're doing 50% uh, of our recycled goods are thrown in the trash. So I would myself as a personal taxpayer be okay with an increase in ta trash fees as opposed to taxes uh, and that would uh, require certain institutions small institutions and stuff to pay a little more of their fair share also and uh, as far as bankruptcy is concerned I if I never heard that word again it would be too soon uh, you can't propose to pay a few percentage points back on your debts and expect people to want a loan to you. It just won't happen. We took all of our money back in 2007 and uh, we, we took it right out of the stock market because we lost too much and put it in the safe, safe savings and uh, we did just like the big dogs did. It's still there. It's not really increasing very much but uh, and also uh, food for thought with the parking authority I used to park over there when I came to meetings and for five bucks I could give the guy a dollar tip and attend the whole meeting uh, it's empty at night so why don't we consider lowering the rates at, at least in the evening you get people in there parking uh, you have to walk a block and a half or two blocks. It's like seven or eight bucks, ten bucks to get out of there tonight by the time we're done here. And uh, another suggestion with the Affordable Care Act, commonly known as Obamacare, it's my understanding that a lot of savings could be extracted from that. And it's time that we start to do some research and consider it as that... Uh, most uh, hospitalization plans and are uh, very, very expensive. And uh, for the outside people, I don't really consider uh, commuter tax as fair. It may be necessary, but I'd like to once again remind them that 35% of our city is nonprofits or uh, tax exempt. And with hospitals and colleges and county buildings and everybody else, we have a huge defense manufacturer that pays nothing in taxes, uh, to my understanding anyway. Uh, well, you know, that's something they should consider and maybe talk to their neighbors if they don't like the tax and for a change they could uh, chip in or at least encourage uh, 
encourage their local representatives to uh, start doing something about our plight because that's a big part of our problem. And uh, I'd like to remind everybody once again that without sourcing of jobs, we're losing tons of money in wage taxes. People's wages have gone backwards and as egregious as uh, uh, property taxes are necessary, uh, people don't, really don't have the money to pay them. So uh, do your best at whatever the best deal we can get. And uh, do consider that with the trash fees because it's zero dollars to dump at the, uh, at the uh, recycling center per ton. That's a lot of money. I would estimate uh, how many trucks do you have go down, down there, multiply it by two, and deduct it off of the Naples landfill. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marie Schumacher. Uh, good evening, Council Mayor. Um, good evening. Good evening. Business Administrator. Uh, first, I would like to say that uh, how much I wish that we would have had these changes at least by noon today because it was impossible to write all these changes down, let alone digest and, and formulate intelligent questions to them. And in that regard, I, um, I, saw, I, I heard of a $5 million sale lease back, and I hope Mr. Joyce will address that later. So I don't know what is being sold and leased back. Um, I'm also disappointed that it's only a three-year budget. I think it should be a five-year. Um, the sales tax, uh, I would like to point out, if it does go through, uh, that that also is a de facto uh, increase of the property taxes if, in fact, you invoke the, uh, the, exclu or the, um, the exception to usurp all the taxes instead of giving the taxpayers the 60 percent uh, that, that the bill calls for. So that's even more. Um, and then without getting too wonkish, uh, the street smart type savings uh, in, in your plan was shown as a net. I would like to hear the, uh, the costs, what are considered in costs in that, and what are, what the, so we can see what the savings are. Because I did a quick calculation, and it's for the out year, the highest year you're saying is 2015 was $1,300,000. Uh, we have 1,200 parking meters, at least that what was used in the prior analysis. That's $1,083 per meter. You've got 250 operating days, because I assume they get two weeks vacation, so you've got 50 weeks times five. And if you divide that 250 into the $1,083, it's $4.33 per day or one $20 parking ticket per week. Uh, and I would think, depending on what the costs are that are revealed later, I hope, uh, I think probably adding another citation person to what we already have uh, would bring in that same amount of money or very possibly more. Um, commuter tax, again, I think it's immoral and unconscionable, but you already know that. Uh, but I do get have some also has some concerns about the unintended consequences. I don't didn't have time to check to see whether there's a third class um, if any third class city would be allowed to do a a commuter tax. But if they are, um, I think there might be some retaliation, and then our people will be paying four and a quarter instead of three and a quarter. Um, I would rather see a uh, tuition tax, which I understand is not beyond the realm of, of allowable under state law. Um, that would make more sense to me. They're here using our facilities. That certainly makes more sense, and they're not contributing very much. Um, I have some concerns about the uh, outstanding liabilities. For instance, the Medallis property, I don't know if that's ever been resolved, I've asked the question here and, and have not received a, an answer. But if that has not been changed, as I recall that ruling, if the developer did not fix the Medallises and I assume other people on Philo Street uh, flooding, 
it falls back on the city to do. So that should certainly be included if it hasn't already happened. And I recall the last audit, I did ask after the, the last audit came out, there were some um, lawsuits that were pending. And I don't see any cushion in here for lawsuits at all. So, um, and then finally, reassessment. Not one word about pressuring the county or even asking DCED to put pressure on the county from the state level to do a re reassessment. That is so overdue. And I'm really disappointed that you have not pursued that, and I, um, I hope you'll reconsider that and we'll get a reassessment going. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Obviously, uh, you know, the issue tonight with the recovery plan, uh, going to pretty much abbreviate, uh, go through a lot of the comments that uh, I've been making the last few weeks, uh, reiterate a lot of the statements. Uh, you know, we've talked an awful lot about the proposed tax increase, 33%. Uh, and as I've stated many times from this podium, the fact that we had a council who was willing to sit down and work with the administration to come up with a compromise to reduce that tax increase as much as possible. You know, we remember when the, the plan was initially sent down, it called for a 78% tax increase. And we knew full well we couldn't put that burden on the taxpayer's shoulders. So we fought vigorously to cut it down to 33%, nearly half of what this administration wanted it to be. Uh, the commuter tax, as I stated before, you know, there's many issues as to, you know, we feel we're punishing uh, non-city residents uh, for our problems. As I stated, I don't see it that way. I feel when you have individuals coming in with, within the city who are sharing sa services uh, that the taxpayers of this city pay for, such as the public safety, utilizing our roads, our bridges, uh, and every other service that uh, you're entitled to, I only find it fair uh, for those to contribute a 1% towards that. Uh, the sales tax, obviously, that needs to uh, be approved uh, through the state legislature. Uh, but we have the opportunity to generate close to $16 million over a three-year period. And have the ability to generate that revenue certainly uh, is an asset to us moving forward. Uh, obviously, we're uh, looking to generate all revenue possible. And any uh, possibilities that we have, we need to take advantage of. But, you know, it's truly unfortunate that, you know, we stand here tonight and we have to discuss all these issues knowing full well the situation we're in. That, you know, we've had to deal with 10 years worth of fiscal mismanagement by this administration who ran the city recklessly. And what truly disgusts me overall is that we have a Pennsylvania Economy League who sent the letter, as I stated last week, with many objections they had to this plan. And as usual, as they notorious for doing, their solution to everything is tax increases, continuing to place the burden on the residents of this city. You know, they said it's wishful thinking, it's pie-in-the-sky figures. Well, no, it's called accountability. You know, the nonprofits, they stated we're not going to see a dime from them. It's time they're held accountable. They've gotten a free ride for decades. University, 175,000. Everybody says we pick on the U. They're the prime, best prime example we can use. An institution that generated over $230 million in 2010 and they're going to come forward and hand us $175,000 like they're doing us a favor. Oh, and then they come earlier this year like they're doing us an even bigger favor. As I stated, it's pocket change. We need to put a fee on all the nonprofits within the community, or better yet, assess the fee all across the board. Everybody. Everybody pays their fair share. And let's hold them accountable. Let them pay their fair share. They've gotten a free ride. We've missed out on millions and millions of dollars over the last 10, 15, 20 years because we've sat back on it and we did, never did anything about it. But now we finally have a council who took the bull by the horn and you put them in their place. And you met with them and you tried to reach out, you tried to get more from them and they still refused. Well now here's the opportunity. You put a fee, a 1% fee all across the board and we'll generate millions. It's something we need to look into. It's something that should be part of this plan. And as I stated, you hold them accountable once and for all. Uh, one of the other issues in the plan, we talk about reduction in personnel, cutting back, something we should have done a long time ago. But I'm glad to see that we finally realize that we need to cut back. We have the opportunity to save millions of dollars, but most importantly, the opportunity to save millions in professional services that we've squandered millions on over the last 10 years with this administration on individuals, legal fees, millions on Carl Greco and others who we sat back and we just let it go. We, we, 
run the city reckless here. That's where we need to go, professional services. They've totally destroyed this city, and it's driven us to where we are today. You know, as far as Pell and their uh, $2 million they want to offer, the, the, the uh, interest-free uh, loan and the $250,000 grant, I see it as a ploy by the Pennsylvania Economy League to buy a recovery plan. It's extortion. And I don't think we need to get to their level and to adhere to their request that if you don't do what we tell you, you don't impose our measures, we're not going to give you the money. That's not the way. This is our city. This is our town. That's why we elect a mayor. That's why we elect a council to make these decisions for us. We run our city. Bankruptcy, not the answer. As we've stated many times here, a receiver comes in and they raise taxes at will. And as I've said, that 78 percent tax increase would look quite inviting compared to what they'd come in and do. No, and and again with Pell, where they talk about the unrealistic revenue, it's basically real simple. The bottom line is this. We go with this plan, it's a 33 percent tax increase. Or we can go with Pell's plan and raise taxes, and you're looking at a tax increase well over 129 percent. Thank Very you, simple. Mr. Miller. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Mary Schlipko, Scranton resident. Good, Good evening. evening. I dread this. I dread getting up here at this point every week. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Good to see you here. It's a shame there's such tension. I have observations usually when I come up. I don't know the ins and outs and details. It's nice to see you here. It's a shame there's tension in this room that you can cut with a knife. It shouldn't be that way. Um, I do see a lot of holes in the recovery plan. Um, the thinking in this area, like 33% is a gift as compared to 78%. That's not a gift either. But something has to be done. PEL, DCED, DECD, whatever they are, I think I picture them as the Grim Reapers. I don't understand why we can't get rid of them. I don't know what this, why we are held hostage with this $2 million. Uh, my theory, the nonprofits, we need to get another term for them. That's like nobody even bats an eye at that anymore. I don't know how you can, and it's an epidemic. The U is only the tip of the iceberg. There are more and more and more and more, and I don't know if we can all work. I mean, we're all neighbors here. Everybody in this room, we're all neighbors. But there has to be a way. I don't know what it is. If, if there's not a legal way, what can we do with the nonprofits? That's revenue I don't know we can count on. We need to cut. Cut, cut, cut. Mr. Mayor, you have let the authorities go crazy. You really have. I am so angry, and I'll save that for later. The appointment of Mr. Washoe, I went so far as to call a judge's office this week, which I have never done in my life. Called it corrupt, called it horrendous. I don't know if there's any repercussions for that either, calling a judge's office Judge Mazzoni. Thing I say all the time, there's no shame. Honor, integrity, honesty. Uh, clean house. Make cuts. When the new budgets come up, cut, cut, cut. Don't be so nervous, Mr. Mayor. You're here with friends. We're neighbors. As far as the Chesapeake, the sewer hike to get rid of the, clean up the Chesapeake or whatever, after the appointment of Mr. Washoe as a receiver to the Scranton Parking Authority, just forget that because there's already something in the water. We can't change that by that, what is it, $39 now? Work hard, people. Work together. And this will pass, but find solutions after this. Don't end here, like, and then the next year we're here with the same thing, and nobody wants to be here, and everybody's all tensed up. So good luck, Mr. Washoe. You should be so ashamed of yourself as Judge Mazzoni. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we have time for only one more speaker. Bill Jackowitz, founder of the Legion of Doom. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. McGowan. You know, I've been bringing this for several weeks. Remember what that, what that is, Mr. Mayor? That was out in 2001 with the original recovery plan that the voters passed back in 2001, I believe it was. It didn't work. And one of the reasons why it didn't work is because the mayor didn't support it. The mayor, the mayor actually violated the recovery plan several times, and I think we all know that. And, but that's in the past, okay? My concern now is with the new recovery plan. Like I asked last week, is there a stipulation in the recovery plan that the mayor cannot violate the recovery plan or city council cannot violate the recovery plan? 
is there a stipulation in the new recovery plan? Because if there isn't a stipulation, the mayor will violate it again, like he has in the past. Or if we have a new mayor, he might violate it also. Or city council will violate the recovery plan. So let's make darn sure that we get a stipulation in the new recovery plan that the mayor cannot violate it, nor can city council violate it. And if it comes to a draw between the mayor and city council on violating it, then take it to the people. I hope it's in there. You know, I was driving in my car today and I was listening to, I, I listened to the oldies because I'm an old guy. Anyway, a song came on and the song was, how long has this been going on? Does anybody remember that song? Well, I'm going to tell you how long it's been going on and I hope everybody listens and writes these figures down. 7,524 days in 248 months, the city of Scranton has been distressed. Think about that. 7,524 7, days of living in a distressed city. Two mayors, Mayor Connors, Mayor Doherty, and numerous city councils. How long has this been going on? When's it going to stop? The citizens have had enough. We really have. Now, another song came on, and the song was, All I Need Is a Miracle. Does anybody remember that song? Well, the next line is, All I Need Is, is a Miracle, All I Need Is You. Well, in the city of Scranton, the miracle is, All We Need Is Money. It's what we need, money. That's the bottom line. The rest of the stuff is smoke and mirrors and everything else. We need money. We need real money, not monopoly money, not play money, not money that we might get, money that we might not get. We need real money. The only way we can get real money is raise taxes. I'm going to make a lot of friends tonight. Because I say let's raise tax up, taxes 129%. Let's get it over with. Because what's going to happen if we can't make payroll come next month or two weeks from now? We're going to have to borrow more money. Or next January, we're going to have to raise taxes again. So why don't we just cut through the chase? I'm a realist. I believe there's three ways of doing things. The right way, the wrong way, and the common sense way. Why don't we do things the common sense way? If we have to raise taxes 129%, raise them 129%. Let's get it over with. You know, it's sick. People are tired. People are tired of hearing fighting and, and fighting and arguing. They, they really are. They're tired of it. And we just continue to raise taxes and beat around the bush. Let's get it over it once and for all. Okay. Without the money, we have two options, okay? We can either go bankrupt or we can raise taxes. Those are the only two options that we have. Yeah, we can count on a commuter tax. It might get passed. It might not get passed. Why? You know, how many times do commuters use our services? I hear that all the time. They use our services. How many times do commuters actually use the fire department, the police department? Probably not very often. Okay? I have never used the fire department in Scranton or any other city I lived in. I have never used the police department in Scranton or any other city I lived in. And I'm pretty sure that the majority of the commuters have not used our services. As far as our roads, I think we should pay them to drive on our roads because of the mechanical bills they receive from hitting all the potholes. That's what I think. That's my opinion. If we're so worried about our roads, then let's pave our roads and let's get them straight. You know, I mean, I'm, uh, this is, it's, it's re over and over and over again, repetitive, all, all the time, all the time. You know, uh, you know, and, and basically I'll save the rest for later. I appreciate you being here, Mr. Mayor. And I've been talking behind your back, and now you're here, so I'm talking to you face to face. Just like I did that night, we had the meeting. And, you, and I was sitting in the chair you were in, and you were sitting right across from me when Judy could tell you with the nonprofits. And I asked you, eyeball to eyeball, are you going to support collecting taxes in lieu of money from the nonprofits? And you told me you would. And guess what? You let me down. Thank you, Mr. Jackowitz. Because we uh, must begin our regularly scheduled meeting shortly, I ask the remaining speakers to address City Council during citizens' participation. 
Uh, very briefly, though, I do have um, just two or three questions to pose to our guests. City Council did not request or require a revised recovery plan. Uh, the administration did not request or require a revised recovery plan. Mr. Mayor, would you agree that is correct? Yes, I, I, I think you're 100% right. And uh, Mayor Doherty and Mr. McGowan, Scranton City Council collaborated with you on the development of this revised recovery plan. Is that correct? Yes. And Scranton City Council collaborated with the administration and PAL in the development of the city budget. Is that correct? From, yeah, absolutely. There were conversations back and forth. Yep. Thank you. Therefore, it is a city budget, and the revised recovery plan is not a council plan or a mayor's plan. It is a city of Scranton revised recovery plan. And city council and the mayor have pledged to continue to work together for the betterment of our city and taxpayers. Mayor Doherty, I ask you now for any comments you may have. Well, thank you, all of Council. Mrs. Evans, uh, thank you very much. Um, it's been uh, quite a period of time where we've been working together, and I have to say, over the last you know, several months, Council has really come up with a lot of great ideas, and we've worked very hard together. And I believe the revisions in the plan and our communications with the state have brought us here tonight to a plan that will be accepted. Um, we've all made some tough decisions for the betterment of the city. Everyone has a perspective on how they think the city should be run and what plans should be put into place. But in reality, everybody has to come together to come for the betterment of the city. Just as you said, for the city of Scranton plan, it's not a mayor's plan, a council plan, or the state, or Pell. It is the city's plan. As elected leaders of the city, we need to come together and develop that. These are all tough decisions, and decisions that people normally wouldn't want to make, but we realize we do have to make them. And uh, by doing that, we protect the people we represent, the people of Scranton, who live in our city, who love their city just as much as we love our city. And I have to say, I think we made tremendous progress. I think we're on the right track. I think also um, through the efforts of the staffs of council and the administration, and particularly the attorneys, have done an unbelievable job uh, because we're juggling a lot of things right now. We're not only we're putting a plan together, but at the same time we're talking to financial institutions, we're telling them of the progress we're making, and um, you know I think we're headed in the right direction, and, I, and I'm confident that this is going to work. But it's worked because we've all worked together, and you have my commitment. Uh, you know we talk on a daily basis. Yes. Um, not only this, as one of a couple of speakers had mentioned. It's not only this, but it's also after this is done that we continue to work together and we, we push the city forward in the right direction. We have tremendous challenges, as all cities do. That's the purpose of government. We take care of everybody, not just the wealthy and the middle class, but the poor, those who are challenged in life. You know, we, we are in the midst of a great immigration boom in our city today. And the reason people come to cities is because they know they can get help. Uh, in Scranton High School today, 30 different languages are spoken. Uh, that is an example and also an indication of the direction of the city. It is through going through a separate rebirth, a second rebirth because of the immigration that's taking place. We have an obligation to take care of those people and because one day they will be the leaders of our city. And I want them to remember how they are treated because when they're in charge, there'll be a whole new group of immigrants coming and I want them to treat people the way they were treated. And I think with the plan that we've come together on, um, we'll be able to achieve that. I want to thank you because these are not easy times and they're difficult decisions that we've made, but we've put everything aside for the betterment of the community. So thank you very much. I appreciate all your hard work. And as I know, tomorrow we'll be back in discussions all over again as we push this in. Thank you very much and have a great evening. And I thank both of you, Mayor Doherty and Mr. McGowan, for your participation this evening. And Mr. Mayor, I respectfully invite you to attend any future council meetings if your time permits. And uh, if there's no further business, this public hearing is adjourned. And thank you again.
with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community in the last week, particularly Tracy A. Henning, loving daughter, sister, aunt, and my friend whose warmth, generosity, and concern for others will long be remembered, Nancy Christina Barbuti, devoted wife, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and sister, and their dear families and friends who suffer their loss. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order 3A, check received from Comcast in the amount of $207,547.02 on July 31, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Tax Assessor's Report, Final Results from Appeal Hearing on July 25th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluations Received August 10th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Tax Assessor's Report, hearing date August 29, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, amount transferred to the City of Scranton from Northeast Revenue Services, LLC, in the amount of $49,420.68. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes this evening, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Council McGough is unable to attend tonight's meeting because he is out of town. I'd like to welcome Ryan Asselford from Troop 16 Hickory Street Church to our council meeting. Ryan is working toward his citizenship in the community merit badge, and perhaps someday, after he completes his education and becomes a taxpayer, he will sit in one of these seats as a Scranton City Councilman. The Scranton Lackawanna Taxpayers Association will meet on Tuesday, August 21st, 2012, at 7 o'clock p.m. in Scranton City Council Chambers. And that's it. Mrs. Uh, Evans, doesn't Mr. Astleford have to uh, speak for five minutes? <laughs> I'm only teasing you. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get nervous. Relax. <laughs> Mrs. Craig? Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker this evening is Yvonne Xanthus. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Yvonne Xanthus. I live on Dixon Avenue. The reason I'm here, I want to publicly thank the Scranton Fire Department for saving my brother today from a fire at his home. He had smoke inhalation and he lost everything, total loss, but that's just things. I just want to thank them and the, the police department, the EMTs, and the American Red Cross. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much, much Mrs. Xanthus. Our next speaker is Bill Jackowitz. Bill Jackowitz, South Scranton resident, member of the Taxpayers Association, founder of the uh, Legion of Doom. Believe it or not, I belonged to the same troop when I was a young kid. I don't think people believed that I was a Boy Scout at one time, but I really was. 
Uh, let's take a trip down memory lane. Remember when we used to take trips down memory lane years ago? Okay. Andy. Andy Spragula. What happened when he, how did he make out when he was appointed to the Scranton Parking Authority? Not too good. Uh, Nonprofits paying in lieu of taxes. How did the taxpayers make out? Not too good. We're still trying to get money. One day I hope we do. Uh, no money until the mayor attends council meetings. How did the taxpayers make out? Not too good. But again, the mayor did come tonight. Hopefully this will be a start of things to come. Because without the mayor's cooperation, it's going to be not too good. Uh, the parking authority, no money until, until they produce a budget. How did the taxpayers make out? Not too good. We still don't have a, a budget from the parking authority. The last one was what? Three paragraphs long or whatever it was. We're not doing too good on that one either, are we people? Uh, city council voting no for authorities' appointments and having the appointments seated anyway. How are we doing on that one, people? Not too good. We're being, city council's being ignored. That needs to be changed. We need to start working together. Again, hopefully the mayor being here today will be the start of that. Okay, the annual city audits. I understand the audit for 2010 came out. I was looking at it a little bit earlier. Again, it's due in the end of May. We got it on August. How are the taxpayers doing on that? Again, not too good. Response, responses to city council letters by cabinet members and people who are in charge of the department heads. How are we doing on that one? Again, not too good. So we need to really start working on some of these areas because these are important areas. They need to be resolved. And again, I was so happy to see the mayor here today. I hope he comes back again. Uh, I hope city council continues to work together with the mayor. But I would like to see it a little bit more open than in private. I liked what happened tonight. I really do. And we need to push that. Push it, push it, push it. Even if you got to sit on the mayor's front porch, porch, push it. He needs to be here. Nobody yelled at him. Nobody screamed at him. Well, maybe I did a little bit. But anyway, uh, we need more of this. We really do. This is what cooperation is. I'm sorry Mr. McGough's not here tonight. Because this is what cooperation is. And we might be able to get out of this mess. Like I said, people, I don't know if this number really means anything to city council or to the mayor, but I find 7,524 days being distressed as being deplorable. I cannot accept that. Maybe other people in the audience are watching this on TV. Maybe they can accept it. Maybe the mayor can accept it. Maybe Ryan McGowan. I, Bill Jackowitz cannot accept 7,524 days of being distressed for a total of 248 months. We've been distressed as long as Doug Miller's been alive, for God's sakes. <laughs> I'm not serious. And Pat Rogan. Pat Rogan's not only about three years, four years older. Now he's a councilman. I mean, this is, you know, I'm repetitive. 7,524 days. Let's do something about it. That should be tomorrow's headline, Jim Lockwood. 7,524 days of being distressed. I would love to see that in big black, no, big red letters tomorrow's paper. Maybe that will get somebody's attention. And somebody will really start paying attention to this and saying, wow, I didn't realize it's been that long. You know, so again, I mean, uh, Dirty debt is good debt. How do we do with that one, taxpayers? Not too good. Mr. Mr. Washoe's appointment to the parking authority, $100 an hour. Mr. Spindler has been coming here for months saying he had to get a second job to just to make ends meet. Obviously, he doesn't know the same people Mr. Washoe knows. But Mr. Washoe got a $100 an hour entry-level position. 
entry level position as the receiver for the Scranton Parking Authority. $100 an hour entry level position. Who's paying his salary? WNEP reported yesterday it would be Wells Fargo Bank. Scranton Times reported today it would be the Parking Authority. Please answer that during motions if you know the answer. And Chris Kelly's outlook for the city. Not too good. And finally, the Doomer's outlook for the city. I'm looking for truthfulness. I'm looking for, for, for cooperation. I'm looking, if we need to raise taxes 129%, then darn it, we raise taxes 129%. I don't want to have raises, taxes raised two or three times a year, or every year. And, and I don't want to hear any more of that, we can't make payroll, or we can't do this, we can't do that. Unacceptable, and I hopefully somebody will work on this. Thank, Thank you. you. Andy Spiraglia. Andy Spray, says Scranton Fellows, Grantonians. Good evening. If the government would allow us to print money, we wouldn't be in this problem. But unfortunately, they don't. Your, uh, I guess it's 7D. Uh, yeah, 7D. Do you believe we have enough police vehicles? Because obviously you're taking money from buying police vehicles and putting it to use cur uh, these curb cuts that God knows how many people are going to use. And I don't think they're going to be as used as much as a police vehicle would have been. Being everybody's talking about the pork and authority. You're right. I don't believe the Hilton or the condo building is worth $2 million to the taxpayers of Scranton. But that's what we have to pay for them two buildings. Is it worth it? No. Is Mr. Washoe going to be worth $100 an hour? And since the parking authority is broke, and you're going to have to pay off the bonds, you in turn are paying his salary, not the parking authority. And as far as that piece that the uh, lawyer put in the newspaper, that's ludicrous. He's paid to say what he's paid to say. Do you think that's an efficient organization? No. You think anything about the parking authority is good for the city? No. Is this receivership going to be good for the city? Probably not either. You, there, there was a definition of insanity. One was doing the same thing over and over again and ex expecting a different result. So we're going to try to correct one problem that a politician put with another politician. It's not going to work. It definitely is not going to work. And I don't know what's wrong with Wells Fargo. There must be a very good reason why they didn't take one of their own bright boys and put them in receivership to run that garage. Since it affects the bondholders, I would expect they want somebody with manager skill beyond running the, the county. They probably use that as one of the requisites of this job they was in charge of the county. Well, right, maybe they have a little county experience. But we're not talking about the county anymore. We're talking about milking the taxpayers of Scranton. Two million dollars a year for the next, what, 20 years? Something like that. That's, we can't do it. There's no way we can do it. And you're going to be stuck. I'm sorry you don't really consider putting in for some type of a bankrupt. I really do. I, at the point now, what you can see what's happening, the city isn't going to stay afloat. It's going to sink, sink, and sink. Who is going to... Our bond ratings dropped. According to your audit, I read your audit. The, bank, the bond rating dropped again, which we knew it was. Scranton is junk bond. So anybody who wants to give us money would have to do it with that idea in mind and charge high enough interest to cover this junk bad status because at any time this city can go under. If you had a revolt from the taxpayers in this city, this city would collapse. And you might get that. I mean, when you pass these high tax rates,
people are going to remember what Shakespeare said when they stabbed Julius Caesar, et tu es brute. And that's what she's going to be tagged on you people, the people who stuck a knife in the city. You've got to look at something to get from the nonprofits. A residence tax, an occupation of people in the city tax. They talk about the outsiders. These students are here for four years, two years, whatever. They're using more services than anybody that lives outside the city. Actually, most of the people don't even use the service in the city. They just drive through the city, and the state is paying for the road tax. You've got to look way, way outside the box. Otherwise, you're going to be the most hated people in all of Lackawanna County. And I can understand their hate for you because you're taking money out of the children's mouths, and that's the way you have to look at it. Them people got to eat just as well as anyone else. Instead of oppressing them, we should be invite them. You want them to come in and spend money in the city, and yet you're driving them away with things like this. If I know if you hit me, of course, I live in the city, but if Dixon City all of a sudden gave me a 1% tax, I don't think I would ever go to the mall in Dixon City. Thank you. Good evening, Council Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, wasn't here last week, but I was very sad to hear about the passing of Helen Cook. I knew Helen well, worked a lot of campaigns with her. She was a great woman, and she's going to be sorely missed. And condolences to Helen Cook's family. Uh, I didn't see the recovery plan, but I hear we're going to be paying a higher garbage fee. I'm really disappointed with that. You're not? That's no, what I was told. No. The garbage fee increase has been eliminated. Oh, it was eliminated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so it's still going to be $178? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I was misinformed then. Uh, moving on. Uh, the parking authority. I'm going to borrow a line from Mr. Jackowitz tonight. How did council's plan go to have a receiver appointed to run the authority? Not too good. Mike Washoe appointed. They might as well have appointed Chris Doherty, the receiver, because Mike Washoe is a Chris Doherty supporter. When, he was, when Chris Doherty ran for mayor last election, the two county commissioners, including Mike Washoe, supported Chris Doherty, even though he wasn't the endorsed Democratic candidate. So uh, I think Bob Scopoletti can rest easy. He's going to have a job for as long as he wants, I guess, because uh, Mike Washoe is not going to do anything. This, it's going to be status quo for the uh, parking authority, and who's going to take the hit? The taxpayers. It, it's really sad. It, I, I don't know how this happened, but it's, it's a darn shame. And, uh, and $100 an hour. Mike Washoe's going to make more in a day than I make in two weeks. I, I just, I, I'm just in shock over this. It's, it's just... It's, Everything we've said here for the past weeks and weeks and weeks just gone down the drain because it's going to be the same parking authority for God knows how long. It's a darn shame. And uh, in the Doherty newsletter last week, what Attorney O'Brien said, if the September bond payment isn't met, the, the city could be on the hook for uh, $54 million immediately. Uh, Attorney Hughes, is that true? On October 17th, I requested all of the bonds and trust indentures from Mr. Scopoletti. I've never received them, so I haven't reviewed them. I doubt if there's an acceler there could be an acceleration clause, but I doubt it. Well, like if, if we're responsible for $54 million, I don't, then we're going to have to go bankrupt. Uh, the nonprofits. Mrs. Evans, I don't remember who it was, but uh, you recently said that some city took uh, a nonprofit to court and won. Is, would that be a possibility for this council to do that to the nonprofits here if they don't come up with more pilots? Uh, I think before we would do that, um, we're certainly going to try several different approaches, and you know, one of which 
that can be under consideration is um, what has been mentioned by council speakers, and that would be perhaps some type of uh, tax or fee, um, as uh, I believe I mentioned, and someone may have tonight as well, uh, Mayor Luke Ravenstall of Pittsburgh is trying to, or had tried a tuition tax, but um, now I believe he's calling um, the contributions a privilege of, I don't recall if it's a privilege to live in Pittsburgh or privilege to go to school in Pittsburgh fee. So I think there are quite a number of things we can do if the nonprofits are not agreeable to voluntarily make fair share contributions. Okay, thank you. Uh, lastly, for quite a few weeks now, some speakers have been coming up here criticizing council for not having open meetings, meetings behind closed doors. Well, I don't agree with that. And I have an example here. I was in a union for quite a few years. When there were negotiations, we elected people to negotiate for us. We didn't all go to the meetings. The representatives would negotiate, then they would go to the union for a vote. We entrusted you when we put you up there to uh, work for us. And I think that the citizens should put their trust behind you. I know I do. I know you're working hard. But uh, that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, uh, sitting back here listening to uh, Mr. Jackwitz, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing to uh, think 7,524 days the city's been in distress status, and you know, as he stated, uh, as long as I've been alive, I'm only hopeful that. Uh, it won't be for another 22 years. Uh, you know, I was pleased tonight to see the mayor here, along with uh, Administrator McGowan, uh, in attendance here to discuss the issues facing the city. Um, obviously, it's been a tough haul, a long haul, and it was nice for a change to see everybody in the same room, as we've been saying for a long time. There was no reason why this couldn't have happened a long time ago. Nothing went on here. There was no screaming. There was no yelling, carrying on. We all got along and we discussed the issues. And that needs to continue. We need to continue the dialogue. And I'm hopeful that he will continue to, or I should say, adhere to his uh, pledge that he made 12 years ago to be the sixth councilman. You know, it only took him, you know, 10 plus years to do so. But I hope it continues. But most of all, I think it's a credit to this council. We need to sit back and take a look at the fact that, you know, you were persistent for months and months in encouraging the mayor to come forward at a public setting. And this is a major accomplishment for you tonight that we had a mayor come in here to discuss. He wasn't here looking for money. He wasn't here to preach to his rubber stamp council. We had a supermajority, the People's Council, bring the mayor in here. And I really want to commend you for that. And I think the public should applaud you for him coming here tonight because you had a lot to do with this. You know, the recovery plan, as we've said, it's not a perfect plan. But we never claimed that any plan was perfect. I think the, the bottom line here is that we had a council and an administration come together in the interest of the citizens of this city. And your commitment to come up with a plan that you find to be in the best interest moving forward is something I applaud you for. Obviously, you faced many criticisms along the way, and it truly infuriated me. Last week, I was very frustrated that through all this, throughout this process, the critics who claim to have the answers telling us how we should run the city and how we should put our recovery plan together never came forward with a plan of their own. And they still haven't. You know, I heard more of the same. I didn't hear any new suggestions. Mostly, I'm against this, I'm against that. And you're entitled to your opinion, and I respect everyone's opinion. But I also feel strongly that if you're going to be objective, you better have something yourself. And unfortunately, we haven't had that. I haven't heard anything better. And I'm still waiting. And we'll be waiting for a long time. You know, the media, the Scranton Times, Chris Kelly's been brought up already tonight. I guess his uh, statement tonight was the outlook for the city is no good. Well, we're still waiting for his plan. Uh, as I said, he's good with his little Sunday uh, columns every week. I'm still waiting to see how Chris Kelly uh, feels, uh, you know, we should move the city forward. Uh, you know, he's so brilliant. Uh, I'm hopeful maybe this Sunday he'll have a nice little recovery plan for us. Uh, you know, onto the parking authority. You know, I really do 
we appreciate the fact that the council fought to get a receiver in to take over. Uh, the only issue I do have with this is uh, you know, uh, we see Mike Washoe was appointed $100 an hour to run the day-to-day -day operations of the authority. You know, the only issues I do have with this is I'm a little uncomfortable with this is the fact that, you know, it's nothing personal with Mr. Washoe. I have a lot of respect for him as county commissioner. Uh, whether you support his decisions or not, that's a totally different matter. But the fact that, you know, I was hopeful that we would move in a direction where we would sort of bring in somebody, an outsider, who doesn't have close political ties. And this isn't anything that council uh, had any uh, doings on. This was done by Wells Fargo. But, you know, to think, you know, Mr. Washoe, to see him as an individual who has already had a bite out of the apple, so to speak. Uh, you know, we all know we need more transparency and accountability in that authority. Uh, they've run it reckless. Uh, certainly, it's, it's been quite the, uh, the cause of most of our financial uh, issues in the city. And I'm only hopeful that moving forward, we can move in a direction that's not political. We can turn this authority around and make the decisions that need to be made. I do believe council needs to have more of an input than you did in the past. And I do think this is a, a step forward in that, in that direction, that we'll have council having more input. But as I stated, I just hope that this doesn't continue to stay the course of the old political ways that it's been. I'm hopeful we can uh, move forward. Uh, moving on to the, uh, the fire department. You know, a speaker was up uh, earlier tonight, uh, truly unfortunate, the uh, fire that happened uh, this afternoon over on Dixon Avenue in Lower Greenridge. But it also, it once again, brings up the point that, you know, public safety has taken a back seat with this administration. They haven't taken it serious since day one. Their actions have proven it time and time again. You know, more people need to come forward and protest the fire stations that have been closed, they're browned out, the layoffs, and everything that's gone on. People have sat back and they haven't objected to it. People should be appalled that this administration has consistently jeopardized the health, safety, and well-being of the residents of this city. Engine 7 in Westside, and I'll be real brief here, in my neighborhood, my closest uh, engine company, it's been closed for months. I believe Councilman Lascom stated somewhere, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was 33 out of 36 days it was, it was browned out. You know, jeopardizing the health safety of not only my family, but the fellow Westsiders around me and others with, within the city because that's an engine that does respond to other scenes. But people need to come forward and demand that Chris Doherty takes our public safety serious, the SAFER grant, giving three million of it back, knowing full well that it would have restored a full complement of firemen and would have kept our stations open. And what does he do? Gives it back. Makes no sense at all. As I said, it's like winning the Powerball and saying, I don't want all of it. Take some of it back. Consistently, time and time again, hasn't taken our safety serious and needs to be held accountable. And more people need to come forward and demand that their stations be open and that a full complement of firemen are restored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Dave you. Franis. Ray Paranis, Granton. Good evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank you, Mrs. Evans, for having the mayor come today. I'm sure it wasn't easy getting that done, but I, we all appreciate it, and, and it looked like it's gonna, really going to work well. I think it's the beginning of a, a new start here with the council and Attorney Hughes and, and the mayor. And it, it was great to see that, everybody together like that. It was very sincere. And it, and I'm really tired of this negativity coming to this podium. Not so good, not so good. I wish one day you would take the time, all of you, each time, maybe a motion some night, and explain to these people and the people in the city what you do every day and how much work you do. Everybody just takes you for granted and thinks that you just come here on Thursday and that's it. They have no clue. I wouldn't want your wife for all the tea in China. I, I can't even comprehend how you, because people don't know. I think you should take the time to tell them. I really do, because they, they don't believe it. And for everybody to come here and say, well, I want 129%. Well, Mr. Jackwitz, maybe you could pay my taxes, because I can't, sir. I certainly can't afford it. And I do not want 129% tax increase, and thank you for fighting for that, to get it as low as you can for us, because that's why you're there. You'd be just like PEL if you gave us that tax increase, and, and you're not. And another matter, I, I'd just like to say this quickly. Uh, I want to say that Natalie Salfinelli and the Lackawanna Heritage Valley Association they are doing a wonderful job. I go there every day with my boy and I see the work that they do. They had like 100 kids down there the other day 
doing putting mulch around and, and paved in that uh, getting the road all straight and picking up garbage they don't miss a trick they're down there all the time there was a tree down i call them gone the next day i mean they're just phenomenal and they they really are good and they're doing a good job now board i'd like to ask you this if i don't know if you want to answer this but i'd sort of like your opinion like just like megan we're just talking me and you we're not but we are what do you think about mike washo as far as do you think he will get rid of bob scopoletti i mean that was the plan here to get rid of these people not keep them it scared me when i read that mike washo said he doesn't it, it doesn't want to do that yet what do you think he's only been there one day i know but that was and the purpose I, of getting a receiver there were many people interviewed i mean first of all there's a misconception that judge mazzoni just picked mike washo and and he selected him uh, the process and the reason it takes a time in order to get a receiver is that there were several people that the insurers and the new bond trustee interviewed for the position. And they selected Mr. Washoe. There was a consent order entered into uh, between, and the city was a defendant, uh, between the city, the parking authority, and uh, Wells Fargo uh, appointing Mr. Washoe. And in addition to that, it says in the order, in the, the consent order runs three or four pages, I've read it, that he has full authority. He has no obligation to continue the existing employees of the authority, um, that he has full authority to hire a manager uh, of the parking authority. I can tell you that the insurers have interviewed and brought people in to look at the operations of the authority that are professional parking authority managers. They're very serious about this. Good. They they know the situation and if council did not vote the way that they did right. to not make that bond payment that's what woke the insurers up that started this whole process. Right. And I think it's much too early to tell. Uh, I've, when I was special counsel to the city, I worked very closely with Mr. Washoe uh, on the mall project, spent lots and lots of time with Mr. Washoe on the mall project that became a reality uh, against a lot of odds. Uh, I know him, you know, from that standpoint. So I, he just can't come in on day one. I mean, he's there in order to marshal all the monies and see that all the monies are reported. He has to have some staff right now. But I believe that, that from my information is that in, in time, and you just can't do this overnight, that, that there will be a professional management that will take over the operation of the authority. Thank you for answering Maybe that. Maybe I've said too much, but no, no. that's the, I'm glad I mean, you that's did. been the goal from day one. Um, contrary to a lot of reports, I think that had not the insurers realized that this authority was ineptly run and mismanaged, they wouldn't have taken the actions that they did. In number one, replacing the trustee. And number two, coming in and getting a receiver appointed. And number three, taking the steps to bring people, professional parking managers in from outside the area to look at the garage, at all the garages, with the view, I think, to, re to have competent people run it. And I know that they're that they, they do want to do everything they can to raise the revenues to reduce the liability to the city. Well, and it all started with you, Attorney Hughes. Well, I was directed by council to do it. Well, you know? council, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you worked together in that. I was just the hired gun. <laughs> no, but you, when you explained everything all the time, you really made it what was going on. And, and if you, and it, well, the people appreciate it, believe me, because if you didn't do this, council and you, that wouldn't have been in default and none of this would have happened. And, and I might add, happened. I don't think there are too many attorneys 
who would have done this? No, who would I, have taken this on? I don't know any. So you, we are very grateful to Attorney Hughes. And that's the truth, because we wouldn't be here today with Mike Washo there. I mean, I, don't, I know Mike Washo. He's a nice guy, and I hope he does. I don't think, well, I like Mike Washo, and I hope he does a good job. And we have to have faith in him. It's like you said, Mr. Hughes. These people didn't put him in there just to go in there and do not what they didn't want him to do. He's there for a reason, or none of this would have happened, right? They know there's substantial problems that have right. to be corrected. And I, I, I don't know who was interviewed. I know that, that there were several people interviewed. They made the decision that he was the one to hire to get this ship corrected. I'm just hoping that Bob Scopoletti is gone. Not even now, even if it's six months, but whenever the time comes that they need to do it, I hope that's what I'm hoping. And thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. Uh, we're here to talk to you this evening about a specific special event that's coming up next month. Uh, this is an event that's currently at the moment in the planning stages, so this announcement is sort of a uh, save the date, mark your calendar type of announcement, and we will have more details and more information upcoming as the event develops over the next several weeks. But the event is we're proud to announce that our department, the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations, in cooperation with the Lackawanna County Commissioners, will be hosting what we believe will be the first annual Lackawanna County Senior Health Fair. This is an event that's obviously geared towards our senior citizens, senior residents of Lackawanna County, and it's going to be taking place on Tuesday, September 11th, 2012, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lackawanna County Trolley Museum, 300 Cliff Street in Scranton, on the grounds of the Steamtown National Historic Site. The event will feature free flu shots for seniors that attend the fair. Seniors will be able to learn the importance of flu shots and protecting themselves from the flu and other colds, communicable diseases. Light refreshments will be served. Free tours of the Trolley Museum will be offered, and there will be prizes and giveaways from a number of different uh, attendees, I don't want to say vendors, but a number of different agencies and entities that will be there to provide information, again, giveaways, uh, displays, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the following agencies at the moment are scheduled to attend, which include the Pennsylvania Department of Health, Blackwater County Area Agency on Aging, and the National Council of Aging. Uh, this event is also being put on in cooperation with traditional home health and hospice. Uh, this is something that our department is working on. The idea came up several weeks ago and we're moving actively now to plan and execute and develop the event. We've only got a little bit less than a month but uh, it's going to come together and we're looking forward to this being a great opportunity for our senior residents of Lackawanna County and of course the city of Scranton to come together and be able to have an event that they can come to where they can learn new information, um, learn about new services, offerings, things like that. I've got several flyers here. Uh, we have, I have one and we have one for every council member and also some extras that I can leave with Ms. Marciano. This is an, and we also have some that I can give to anybody in attendance who would like uh, some information. And again, we haven't clarified everything yet. Uh, we're still working to develop it with partner agencies, um, other entities in the communities that serve our seniors. But we want to work together with council and with anyone else who wishes to work with us on this to spread the word. Uh, we're going to be going out, our department, to senior centers, uh, senior residents, homes, and other places that serve seniors throughout the county to make them aware of this. And we're going to keep developing it up to the day of the event to make it as easy to attend and as fun and as engaging to attend as we can for senior citizens. Uh, but over the next few weeks, I'll be here with more announcements about it. We'll keep you informed as the event develops as to what we'll have. And again, I look forward to working with you. And I ask everyone here in attendance and who's watching, uh, please spread the word uh, to anybody, neighbors, friends, co-workers, anyone you know who is a senior resident of the county uh, and, of course, the city, please let them know and they'll all be welcomed at the event. Uh, so we will be here again with more announcements as the event develops over the next few weeks and we look forward to keeping you informed of it and we hope to have a great turnout for our event on the, uh, on the 11th. Uh, that's all I have for this evening. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. Would you be able to email me um, the information regarding the uh, senior event? Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our next speaker is Ron Elman. OK. 
Council. <coughs> Everybody been telling me this week that I, I've been negative on anything, everything. I, I'm not negative. I'm just stating facts that, that are out there for everybody to see. A, a bunch of people just don't see them. You know, that's why I get away with it every week with my big mouth, because I, I got facts, not a bunch of distortions like uh, the newspaper prints day in and day out. Uh, I guess that's why nobody ever confronts me up here. I've, I've been waiting for someone to come up, you know, year after year. <clears throat> I got two attack ads. I learned that from Obama's stuff in the paper. First is Mr. Zygmunt, who, who he's just a blatant liar for the school, and that's it. There's just no other way to put it. He, he's just full of propaganda, and, and he doesn't have facts. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago he said the university follows it and qualifies as a nonprofit in, in every way whatsoever, and they don't. Those five rules I gave you, they don't fit in, and that's, that's from the state. Something should have been done years ago about them being like a big octopus taking over the city. You know, to me, they're a business first and an institution of learning secondly. Yeah, that's my opinion, I guess. And this irresponsible nonsense that, that Mr. Uh, Zygmunt spruce forth in, in their defense, last week he, he had something about they pay a couple hundred thousand dollars temporarily on 11 pieces of property, but there wasn't a mention one of the 150 houses they've taken off the payroll that have cost the taxpayers of this city millions forever. Millions and millions of dollars so far. You know, that's what I'm saying. He's just, they just blatant lies what they give us. A couple years ago, last year, I think it was, first they said that, that 5,000 students spend $100 a week in the city, and we ought to be grateful. Then a couple of months later, from $100 a week, which is, what, five, five million, they went up to $400 million a year for the students, which would be like $80,000, $85,000 a piece a year. And, and nobody says anything when, when they have such distortions. You know, I, I just don't, I support this university. They're not doing nothing positive for me or the people of the city, you know. And of course, I, I've read about some benefits that they have, you know, but it, it, they are a liability to the people of this city. When you go uh, to Beaver, down the, to, to the football games, that's, that school supports the city. It's completely opposite with us. My second attack is, is Mr. Tunis today. Uh, 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 just his gross incompetence and saying that they are, are doing good management in there, that there's nothing wrong. I, I know everybody had to read this ridiculous article. Uh, I didn't agree to, 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 to the SPA money. I haven't talked to anybody out there in the streets that agreed to it. It was Mr. Doherty and the council before this one excluding Miss Janet, who, who, who spoke against it. All of a sudden, we're responsible for millions and millions of dollars. You know, you've got a bunch of guys over there. Uh, Donald Trump wouldn't even hire them, plus have to fire the fools, because they do a terrible job. They've been doing a terrible job. That's why there's millions of dollars down the drain. It's not worth spending another penny on them. 
It's got to end someplace. A city that can't make payroll sure can support them for the next year after year. I'd, I'd like to say something real quick before I go. This is from Abe Lincoln, who was a good man, even if he was a Yankee. And for all those college students at the university and the high school students that don't know who Abe Lincoln is, I think he was the 16th president way before Obama. But he said something. This ship is sinking faster than the Titanic. And the, the, he speaks of the ship of state. To save the good ship of the Union on this voyage, Nobody will have a chance to pilot her on the next voyage if we don't start right now, immediately, planning the future of this country. And it, it, this is in reference, we need to do it now. The, the future of this city needs to start now. I've talked to two, three high school and college students a week. They, they're concerned about staying here. Those are who we should be concerned with. And those are the people you can't leave with the loans like the SPA and, and, and the, let the university keep on being a magnet on the people of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. Does anyone else care to address council? we continue this meeting with only two councilmen up there? Yes. But there's no quorum. Once a quorum is achieved, it's maintained. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen, I just have a few questions. I'm not going to take mo much of your time. Do you know if there are any plans in the work for the East Parker Street Bridge? It's been one lane for like three years now. I haven't received anything that I remember reviewing, but we could check into it. That's a very busy bridge because we have the Parker House over there, you know, and you young guys probably know where that is, right? Yes. yes. Um, it's very inconvenient. To, I mean, there's a light there, but it's very inconvenient for, for so long. Also, uh, Lakeside Drive and Depot Street. We have had now, I believe, three stop signs put up there, and three of them have been stolen. If you could check on that or... Absolutely. Yes, um, absolutely. And also, I do have a question about the Scranton Parking Authority. Mr. Washoe, in his capacity as receiver, can he, can he get rid of the board at the parking authority? Can he get rid of the people on the board? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, can he get rid of the Hughes? board itself? No. But can he get rid of the people that are on the board and replace them? You're into an area that I'd rather not comment on. If an operator is hired, there'd be no reason for the existing employees. OK. And does anyone happen to know who the other people were that were considered for this receiver and how Mr. Washoe's name came up, by whom, who brought up his name? Does anybody know that? I found out from the Scranton Times. Yeah, I found out from the Scranton Times as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all I want to know. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Dave Dobson. Good evening. Like bad news, it just doesn't go away. <laughs> uh, I owe you people and the people of the city an apology. Uh, one thing I forgot about was the audits. Uh, and I would appreciate if the mayor's watching that he makes a, a concerted attempt to bring that in before you people have to be confronted with uh, uh, 
adopting in a, a recovery plan. And uh, I rarely disagree publicly, uh, but I disagree with term limits for council. I think the executive side has probably too much power in most instances, and uh, it became, uh, especially during the FDR administration, which we had World War II, but the man became too ill to do his job, especially in the last term, and that's where that came from, and it was a tradition handed down from George Washington, who felt that he might establish a dynasty or a uh, an, aristoc uh, an aristocracy, so he uh, bowed out, and by then he probably wasn't feeling too good anyway, because uh, he had a pretty rough life. Uh, during the French and Indian War, he fell into a river and, uh, in the middle of the winter, and all kinds of stuff. He's a really interesting guy. Uh, and a mention was made about trash fees again. I'd like to point out that is that not paid by all? Uh, so in other words, if I had a small nonprofit and I put trash out, do they pay trash fees? They have, that's the purpose of a fee. Is, uh, so that, that's the idea. I mean, it's, it's chicken feed money, but it's, it's the point that you might have to raise somebody else's uh, taxes, 10 or $20 to take up for them, and then they're really not paying anything extra. So it's just something to consider. I mean, it's not a great reason to, to be disagreeable about. Uh, and uh, the parking authority, um, also no mention has been made, and I found out uh, doing some political work that the theater downtown also validates tickets uh, across from the mall and uh, it's free parking for them also. So that's where I feel so a lot of the problems came in was that we were promised all of this economic development with the Connell building and who knows what those people are paying? We'd never get an answer anyway when we ask for one. And, and uh, the medical school was given 300, and the, the Hilton was given 120, and, and the next thing you know, everything's free. And the people from out of town say, thank you. Thank you, Scranton. Don't ask for, uh, don't ask for a commuter tax, though, uh, or we'll rip your heart out. And uh, last week, a uh, mention was made about a DPW uh, or a police car catching fire. And uh, Nelson, my little buddy from the uh, juvenile division, complained for week after week after week that he didn't even couldn't get motor mounts done on his car, engine mounts. And uh, I, I often wondered if we don't need a little education uh, down there uh, that could be offered by the employer to bring people up to speed. I know I did it. I did it for free at the dealership when I worked there, and I went in on Saturdays and went on a study computer, and it did help. I, after a while, I had the people that were shipped to school uh, out, out of state and everything calling me over to see what the problem was. Uh, and that's not giving myself, but that's the truth. Uh, and on the sewer business, uh, the sewer authority, um, there's a local person that does a lot of work with uh, the river. And keeping in mind, he doesn't draw a wage from the city or the sewer authority, Bernard McGurl. And if we could invite him sometime for a caucus and possibly get to the bottom of this. Some of this money is being required by the federal government to be spent. So uh, it's, we have a big choice there, spend the money or get fined $1,000 a day or 
a uh, couple million dollars or what, whatever in the heck, but uh, uh, they haven't been very helpful with money, even though we're cleaning up the Chesapeake Bay and all. And uh, I might mention uh, in Pennsylvania, if you vote 50 years straight, uh, you get a super voter award. This is the golden parrot. And uh, these people, 25% uh, of them now do not qualify as voters because of the photo ID law, state photo ID law. Judge Simpson yesterday just uh, instated the, uh, for this fall, and uh, keeping in mind that nine counties have no photo, voter, uh, photo center, and 10 or 11 are open one day, and we have about between seven and 900,000 people that may be ineligible to vote. And uh, shame on Judge Simpson. He, I don't know where he got his law degree from, maybe to do a little tech. Thank you. Thank have a good you. night. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm, tonight I'm uh, hoping that Council uh, will not either introduce this recovery plan or vote on it. I'm really of the opinion that it should be tabled. Um, it's just not workable. You know, relying on commuter taxes and just, you know, all these other things that there's no legislation for it, even a, even a county tax. I think it's really time for the people outside this city to call all their legislators and make sure that there is never again a commuter tax implemented in the Commonwealth, especially here for Scranton. Um, you know, a lot of residents may be a little angry at that statement, but this city knew where it was for a long time. This isn't a surprise. Um, PEL and all the other political forces, they had sway. They could have did something. In my opinion, they did nothing. At what point does a government have enough of any individual's income in taxation? Now, the State Taxation Equalization Board said that the City of Scranton, in this document, its tax rates are, I believe, 35 percent too low. They should be higher. But the only reason they're not is because the county hasn't done an assessment. When anybody with any common sense knows the property in the city of Scranton has lost most of its value, and we have auctions here, the former Chamber of Commerce building across the street is being converted into apartments. Now, we have certain, and I don't want to say certain, but we have individuals who talk about nonprofits, but their legislation comes through here for funding all the time certain nonprofits, and they get money. And then on one hand, we're complaining about them, and on the other hand, we're funding their expansion. There's something wrong here. I think there's a very serious disconnect. Now, Council on the Home Rule Charter, as I've stated many times before, had the power of subpoena and never used it. Okay, so when you say that somebody is hiding this document from you or that, and you don't have all the facts, in my opinion, it's not possible because a judge can order that those facts be presented to you. And what's happened now is that this city is just in very, very serious trouble. And I just don't see how we can pass a recovery plan relying on the legislature to pass law to make it possible to collect the money necessary to make this recovery plan work. And the other thing is that Scranton had a redevelopment plan. It was called SAPA. Wanted to talk about it with Mr. Lascom at the debate. Wanted to talk about it with council. It was all political. No, it wasn't political. It was about redeveloping this city. Now, we can tax everybody, and we can walk through the neighborhoods and look at all the for sale signs. They aren't diminishing. They're increasing. In my opinion, we passed a flawed rental registration program in this city to raise revenue and do harm to the tax base. Council did that. You know, it, it reaches a point when you squeeze an orange to make orange juice, you run out of juice. 
And that's what's happened here. You know, we can vilify the parking authority, we can vilify the sewer authority, but the truth of the matter is that the council and this administration had an obligation to protect the residents' interest. And taxing non-entities in this city, people that don't live here, that's not a solution to our problem. That's just a way to take somebody's money that we shouldn't be taking. And we can talk all we want to about the services we, they use when they come here. Well, what about the services we use when we go there? You know, the truth of the matter is this. The residents pay for the services that they receive here. If there's a disconnect and a problem, then that problem should have been solved decades ago, and it wasn't. But now that everybody's back is up against the wall, you know, the truth of the matter should be told that the only thing that people are interested in is paying the bondholders. I mean, we've got a pension plan that's underwater. And I don't know why we haven't implemented a 401k. You know, it's pretty easy to just put legislation up there, vote on it, and hold every property owner hostage, like the one lady said in the paper. She moved out of here to get away from regressive taxation, and now council wants, to, and the state, and whoever else wants to tax her some more. So how far does she have to go? And I just think it's time to table this, because it can't work. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening again, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mary Chilipko, resident city of Scranton. As a neighborhood leader in Pinebrook, I do just want to mention that we had an excellent meeting on Tuesday night. We've had one of the best, we had one of the best neighborhood meetings we've had in a long time. Uh, there were no egos involved. Mr. Loscombe was in attendance, Councilman Loscombe. Councilman Rogan is, if he's not present, he's in constant communication with us. And I'd like to pay a compliment to the new chief. Um, well, Acting Chief Captain Graziano. He attended our meeting as well as Lieutenant Crofton, and I have to give him a compliment. He was so interested, and we worked together on problems and trying to find solutions, so I think that's a bright spot for the city. Um, we do need some help. As far as 7D, um, I read the paper and almost cry anymore. That's sad, but I did cry when, almost cry when I saw that three police vehicles were hit during the drug bust down on Albright Avenue. They are in such bad shape as it is. Um, I don't understand. Maybe we'll get some more explanation on 7D. Uh, Mr. Rogan, did you ever look, find any further into our street sweeper overtime issue? No, um, I, a motion was made, and I, I believe it was unanimous, um, asking all the department heads to report overtime, I believe it was for the last year or last two years to council and on a monthly basis, itemized by employee who receives the overtime. And once again, um, we haven't received a response from any department head. So we're still working on that. Well, the, we're, we're, we'll just we'll we're just waiting. We're just waiting, yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the Mike Washoe situation, maybe I'm the only one incensed. Um, I read it in the newspaper. Most people that I know reacted, the reactions were shock, disbelief, and nausea. Uh, I have notes all over the place here. But um, nothing personal. I don't know Mike Washoe, a very intelligent man, I'm sure. And it seems to me tonight to be smoothed over. I would also like to know, don't we, aren't we owed an explanation as to how his name got into the mix for the parking authority receivership? I don't think Wells Fargo hired him. Uh, what do people like? Is there certain people that call people that don't have jobs that are politicians and just say, hey, here's another one, apply? Why couldn't I apply? Who interviewed them? How did the interview process become? I think we're owed that explanation. You know, we've known him a long time. He does good work. Big deal. I don't know why I expected to see Joe Schmo from Shavertown that had some experience in running parking garages. And then they're going to bring in professionals. What do we need him for? I'm tired of the same names over and over and over again. I don't know him, but I've heard his name, I think, since I'm alive. Maybe not quite that long. We should be privy to more information, because I came here and was convinced that the vote and however the money went, we would see changes, not to see Mike Washoe appointed as receivership. Uh, you will never convince me that there was not politics involved in that. Um, He's only there one day, I understand that. That's one day too long for me. 
And what did I hear comments somebody made today? At least they didn't appoint some political hack career politician. I think that says it all. I'm, I'm so angry. That is not change. That is not, nothing will change. A bare bones operation it was described as. You will see those people there and they laugh. They have to laugh every day they go to work, if that's what, if that's what you call it. Judge Mazzoni, again, I say, whoever else was involved in that appointment, Mike Washoe, get a real job. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening again, Marie Schumacher. Uh, I guess I'll start with Mr. Rogan tonight. Um, five years ago, uh, 408 Cedar Avenue, or Cedar, maybe it was just Cedar LLC, received a quarter of a million dollar loan from the, the city for, um, well, it was, it was, at least it was said during the council meeting that it was at 5% interest for 25 years for the acquisition and building uh, a business and business for equipment inventory and working capital to expand their business. Um, I happened to drive by 408 Cedar and it is available. So could you find out perhaps whether they've just moved to another location or Absolutely. if they've gone and what happens with the, the balance of that loan if they are no longer functioning as a business? Absolutely. I'll get in touch with Ms. Abley I, Yeah, I did check the it's still listed as an active corporation, but that could be a little bit old. Um, next, um, uh, Mr. Laska must read minds, and that's why he uh, departed, because... Well, actually, Mr. Loscombe wasn't feeling well, oh. and uh, he spoke with me. He needed to leave. Well, sorry about that. Well, I'll bring it up anyway, because there's still three of you there. Um, just. The news in, the, in, in this past week, uh, another police bad boy. Uh, only difference, well, the, the only likeness is that Mr. Jarbola once again passed on doing anything and sent it back to the police department. But I don't understand. I was told that you couldn't give names, you couldn't tell what the offense was, uh, but that was then. And now we have it in the paper, the person's name, three multiple uh, shoplifting sprees. Uh, why can't we get that information on the person who was demoted? I don't care about the name. I've said that repeatedly. But I do want to know what the offense was in that case. I think we owe that. If we're stopped by a police, we need to, we need to be, feel secure. Uh, that we're in, in good hands and, and nothing's going to happen to us. Uh, on the uh, revised recovery plan, again, um, I still don't think there are enough cuts. I, I think we need to we need to cut more. And um, I want to would ask Mr. Mr. Joyce during motions to uh, let us know how much is in the the new revised recovery plan for the Scranton Parking Authority debt per year for those three years. Um, uh, also, I, I missed, I got a little bit of the property tax increases, but I didn't get them all, Mr. Joyce. So if you could give us the, the, ta the tax increases for 2013, 14, and 15, that would be helpful. Um, and then I, I would like to know, quite a while back now, I gave counsel some case law that concluded that uh, the property tax exemption of a government-owned facility did not pass on to a commercial operator and noted that that would make the former Chamberlain, or maybe it's still the current Chamberlain property, uh, tax taxable to the tune of like $500,000 a year. What, what did council do with that? Maybe I'll bring it back again next week and maybe Maybe you can try to do something about that. And then uh, I'll conclude tonight with taking issue with Mr. Miller's comments about PEL, because I read that letter that was excoriated uh, last week or two, I guess it was two weeks ago. And 
they only recommend that the property taxes <laughs> be be raised until it could be proven that some of those other taxes could be were were actually real and actually include it that they sh would the property taxes should be reduced when any of those other taxes came to fruition so i i don't think that was all they were thinking but um I do think that's a that's certainly a a more uh, safe way to go is to include certain taxes a certain certainty for uh, uncertain income. So I'll look forward to uh, the fifth order. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Janet. Hi, Chris. Hi, hey, welcome back, my boy. Thanks, Chrissy. <laughs> Thank you for what you gave me. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, good evening, Council. Nelson Ankarani, resident taxpayer, exercising my First Amendment rights. Good evening. Good evening. Recently, Council has been getting beat up by the slimes because the recovery plan is not in place yet. You have also been getting criticized by many others. Pell and DCED can't make up their minds as to what the recovery plan should say. Pell and DCED now say Scranton made pro progress on recovery plan, but it still has holes. Their credibility is lower than a snake's belly. When it comes to a revised recovery plan, their original plan had the sale of the storm drains for, the six, for six million plus from the city to the sewer authority. They didn't know, or did they, that the sewer authority owned them and couldn't be sold to themselves. That had holes, but yet they wanted to put it into the plan. The city was supposedly was going to sell the parking meters to the Scranton Parking Authority for six million. Where was the SPA going to get that money when they were almost in default? Oh yeah, I forgot. They could have borrowed the money. And then the city taxpayers could pay them, pay the loans, when the Scranton Parking Authority could not pay back that loan. If I remember correctly, there was a $35 million loan taken out by the Scranton Parking Authority in 2000, and I believe it was seven. Ms. Evans, did you vote for the approval of that loan? No, I did not. I didn't think so. Then it was the rubber stamped council, the one that was sitting prior to this council. Now the Scranton Parking Authority can't pay its bond or loans. I still can't understand why the Scranton Parking Authority or that council would, have would vote for the approval of a $35 million loan with the $59 million interest payback. This council is getting the blame because they were going to let the Scranton Parking Authority default. I don't know what's worse, a default or the taxpayers now going to pay $2 million a year to keep them afloat. The banks loaned the Scranton Parking Authority the $35 million. They were going to get $59 million in interest back. Why won't they loan the money now? They just, I don't know, they did it for the Scranton Parking Authority, now they won't do it for us. We never had to have a uh, recovery plan in place. Now that we do. This council did not put the city in $400 million plus in long-term debt. Let's start putting the blame where it belongs. The administration spent us into ob oblivion and the banks loaned the money. So shouldn't they take some of the blame? A lot of the blame, maybe. They loaned the money to help put us where we are right now. This council did not vote for any of the loans that put us where we are today, except one of the sitting council members. We all know who that is. If you are getting, so you're getting the blame for the mayor and the banks spending spending and borrow. Don't take the bait. We know where that came from. 
The banks loaned the money prior. The administration spent the money. Don't take the blame. As for going bankrupt, you won't have to worry about raising the taxes. The receiver will do that without any approval from any one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Fifth, Craig? Mm -hmm. Fifth order, 5A motions. Councilman Rogan, do you have any motions or comments? Yes. Um, just two questions on the recovery. I know Mr. Joyce said he would elaborate under his motions. Um, Mr. Joyce, will you elaborate on um, the one point Ms. Schumacher brought up, the sales leaseback borrowing? Yeah. You, um, you can do it now or under motions whenever, well, whenever you want to. I'll do it right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, basically, it's, and I asked the same question in uh, speaking with Mr. McGowan, it's, it's borrowing against the city asset. For instance, the DPW complex. That would be a city asset that would be used as collateral for borrowing. Do you know what collateral they plan on using? No. no. It's, it's not parking meters. Th that, that's, that's what the concern was. That, yeah. That's what I, I, I was thinking at first, too, but it's not parking meters. Um, I, I think that the DPW complex was the first thing mentioned. Okay. And um, the second question, I think I heard Mr. McGowan correctly. The conditional real estate tax increase, the 68.56%, that is not in addition to the 35.89%, is it? No. Okay. So that would just be the, the total amount if the other revenues didn't come in. Correct. All right. Thank you. And, and I'll hold my other comments for the agenda items as they come up. Um, as many of you were, I was very upset to read in the newspaper about the appointment of former Commissioner Mike Washoe as the receiver for the Scranton Parking Authority. Now, I've met Mr. Washoe a few times. He's always been very friendly and pleasant. He's a nice guy. I don't have anything against him personally. But I was hopeful that the receiver that was appointed, and I think everyone was hopeful of this, would be a business professional not somebody who is entrenched in Lackawanna County politics for longer than I've been alive. And that is what's very frustrating in seeing this appointment go through. And, you know, Mr. Washoe knows probably all the employees at the authority. You know, he may be friends with some of them. You know, I, I was very hopeful that it would be somebody from out of town. I don't know what the bank was thinking, because at the end of the day, they want to get their money. So they, they want the authority to be run professionally, as do the citizens and the members of council, because we don't want to have to pay that debt. But it's very frustrating. Um, I would hope that we could have Mr. Washoe, Mr. Scopoletti, other members of the board in here for a caucus as soon as possible um, to discuss what his plans are for the authority. Um, and it, with um, agreement of my colleagues, I would ask that we, we send a letter um, requesting him to come to a meeting when it can be scheduled. Yes. yes I agree. Okay. Um, and another thing, and, and I'll mention these questions, but hopefully he comes in. I, I think he will. The $100 per hour salary, in addition to Mr. Scopoletti's salary, the other financial um, person's salary, Storinda's wife, all the people that have been put into this authority, you know, assuming Mr. Washoe works a 40-hour week being in charge of, of this authority, you know, he's going to be making more money in a week than many people make in a month or two months. I think anyone out there would love to make $4,000 a week. It doesn't happen. And it especially shouldn't happen in an authority or a business that is basically bankrupt, because that's what the authority is. They are broke. That's why they come begging to city council looking for money. Also, the comments that were made in the Scranton Times to the effect of, you know, we have a lean operation and things are, are being run effectively, if that was the case, there wouldn't have been a receiver appointed in the first place. I hope that they really don't believe that the residents of Scranton are stupid, because they're not. Every single person I talked to since that article ran has brought this up. 
How could they believe, how could they expect us to believe this, that this authority is being run properly? It's obviously not. If it was, we wouldn't be discussing it right now. Another thing, I, I firmly believe that another, not a, another penny of taxpayer dollars should be given to the granted parking authority to, until Scopoletti's fired, the finance people are fired. But at the same time, I would hope that Mr. Washoe wouldn't take out the problems at the authority on the employees. The employees at the authority, by and large, do a good job. I haven't had one complaint about a parking authority employee, other than you get a ticket, but that's their job. The employees do great work, and they're actually understaffed. It's the management that's the problem at this authority, and, and the changes need to be made. So hopefully things will move in the right direction, but I for one, and I know all of you are, are very upset about this appointment. It's, it's, it's another political appointment. It wasn't made by the mayor this time, it was made by the courts, but it's, it's just another Lackawanna County person when it should have been somebody from Philadelphia, New York, with an MBA, you know, business background, somebody who ran a parking garage before privately, not a former county commissioner. Um, next, I, I have heard from um, numerous residents, as well as um, residents in Pinebrook just today at the meeting, that um, our new police chief, Captain well, Chief Graziano, is doing a great job. Um, I'm very glad to hear this. Um, Chief Duffy has done a lot of good for the city, fighting blight and crime in neighborhoods. I hope Chief Graziano will do the same. Um, I, I heard from some police officers that morale is picked up in the department, so that is very good to hear. And uh, I definitely look forward to meeting with him. And uh, Mr. Loskin's not here, but I, I know Mr. Loskin will be working closely with him as well. And I would definitely wish him the best. Next, I'm going on to another department head that isn't doing a good job. Again, the DPW. I hate to harp on it every week, but, but I have to. Many months ago, I think it was actually the beginning of some beginning of spring, I mentioned, and they're not even potholes, they're actually divots, right going up right up to Fawnwood, up in West Scranton. Somebody put dirt to fill them in, whether that was the DPW, and I don't think it was, I think a private resident, you know, just filled in the holes on their own. You know, residents up there are telling me that when you're driving up and another car is driving down, they both try to avoid the pothole, and it's, it's not a pothole, it's a sinkhole. And they both, both cars try to avoid it, and it almost causes an accident every time. Now, the residents up in Fawnwood, very nice homes, they pay very high property taxes. And this is six months that the DPW director couldn't get somebody up there to fix a hole. Next, again with the DPW, Last week, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, I mentioned uh, potholes on Division Street. S schools are going to be back in soon. School buses run on this street. There are very large holes. A resident called at least eight times to the DPW before even contacting City Council, and they can't get any results. So I, I was very encouraged two weeks ago when Mr. McGough, or actually, I'm sorry, Mrs. Craig read off a list of responses we received back from the DPW. I was very happy. I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe they're finally going to get through the stack of work that we gave them. Because as much as I would like to, and I think as much as we all would like to, we can't drive down to the D DPW, take a truck, and fill the potholes. Although it would make our jobs much easier at times. I'm hopeful these will be fixed, um, especially, you know, six months to get a hole fixed is completely unacceptable. And also, um, you know, school route, school buses will be will be running again soon, so they absolutely need to be, to be fixed. Um, two, re two other um, requests that were mentioned, uh, Mrs. Craig, and I'll email all these to you tomorrow. On um, the East Parker Street Bridge, um, I haven't heard anything on that, and maybe the DPW director has. And also um, the, the stealing of the stop sign on the corner of Depot Street and Lakeside Drive. Um, whether it's kids, I, I don't know, but hopefully the DPW could be made aware of it in the police department as well, so they could take a, a closer look there. So that is all I have for now. I will, oh, actually, one more thing. Um, item 7D that was formerly tabled regarding the transferring of funds from police for an account for police vehicles to or neighborhood police patrol to 
curb cuts and road, road paving. The reason this money is being transferred is because the city, it's ineligible to be used this year. Um, when the mayor cut police staffing, when it's cut below a certain level, you can't use federal funds to increase it. Um, you can only use federal funds to increase the current complement of police officers. So at least the money will be used, uh, put to good use, cleaning up the streets and the neighborhoods. And uh, that is all I have for now. I'll comment on the agenda items as they come up. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have comments or motions? Yes, I do. Um, to begin tonight, I'm going to address the recovery plan. I've received several questions regarding the plan over the past two weeks. And hopefully this will help the public in understanding the recovery plan a little bit more or what it's about or some of the repercussions of not having a plan at all. One of the questions was, why does the city need a tax increase in the first place, especially since the city is not increasing services? There are several reasons why a tax increase is needed to cover expenses. To begin, first, we have a $17 million Supreme Court award to pay to the firefighters and police officers, which was caused by Mayor Doherty taking the advice of DCED and fighting against the police and fire unions for years. The debt service that this will cost is outstanding. To note, if it were not for the efforts of some city council members and the administration to negotiate with the unions recently, this award could have been in the range of 30 to $35 million, respectively. Secondly, in addition to this, the MMO, minimum municipal obligation that the city must pay towards the police, fire, and non-uniform pension plans for the city employees will be increasing by $5.1 million per year in 2013, 2014, and 2015 as per a study conducted by Thomas Anderson. This $5.1 million per year increase is a large hit to the city. If you could look at what this would cost the city alone as far as a tax increase, for every 1% in tax increase, it's equivalent to $139,000. So you can only imagine what a $5.1 million extra expense will do to the city. It's, it's very, very, it's a very large hit. Third, salaries are rising. As one knows, prior to court decisions, the fire and police force in Scranton did not receive a raise in 10 years. After court decisions, the fire and police force in Scranton were awarded raises which were retroactive. Therefore, the cost of the fire and police force is higher than in years past and will continue to rise in 2013, 14, and 15 other unionized workers, such as the DPW and clerical unions, will also receive raises in 2013, 14, and 15, and these are all contractually negotiated. There's nothing that we could do about that. Fourth, health insurance costs are rising. Though the fire and police unions will be contributing to their health insurance, as well as the DPW and clerical unions, along with management, as they have been, the cost of health care is rising at a rate of somewhere in the realm of 9% 9 per, 9 per year, as per Pell's data. Fifth, the Scranton Parking Authority, according to the operating agreement, will continue to need funding assistance of the city per their operating agreement, in which the city guarantees their full faith and credit by their taxing powers to cover the Scranton Parking Authority debt. Because of reckless borrowing by the Scranton Parking Authority that has caused the authority to borrow more money that, than they can pay, the city is on the hook for approximately $2 million per year. Sixth, beginning in mid-2014, the city will be required to pay the salaries of firefighters being paid by the SAFER grant at the current time. This is expected to cost the city $700,000 in 2014 and $1.5 million in 2015 to keep our fire department staffed at the same level it's currently staffed at now. And that's just to keep it where it is. Another question that I received over the past two weeks 
pertain to whether or not it would just be better for the city to go bankrupt. I've received a few emails and they've said, well, at this point, the city's so far gone, why isn't the city just going bankrupt? The short answer to is it better for the city to go bankrupt is no. Though some have discussed that the city going bankrupt is the only way out, it's really not. If the city were to go bankrupt, a receiver would be appointed. At that point, the decision-making powers of the administration and Scranton City Council would be a, a moot point. Basically, the administration and Scranton City Council would lose its say in what happened with the city. An appointed receiver would be given the discretion to dictate the future of the city, which means that a receiver could simply increase your taxes at will. A municipal bankruptcy is not the answer to getting rid of the, uh, the municipal debt that Scranton has. Unlike a personal bankruptcy, the debt does simply not go away. In fact, after researching further into municipal bankruptcies, there had not been one case where a municipal bankruptcy had forgiveness on its debt. So, I'm generally saying that if a municipality were to go bankrupt, it doesn't mean that the bonds or the loans that the municipal, municipality has just simply go away. They're still required to be paid. In addition to this, a municipal bankruptcy would destroy the city's credit rating and jeopardize the city's borrowing power in the future for, a next, for a necessary tax anticipation notes which are used on a year-by-year -year basis to keep the city afloat until tax revenues are realized in the beginning of the year for each year. A third question that was asked of me over the past week was why we simply can't privatize refuse collection and eliminate the garbage fee, which is $178 per year. The first reason that we can't do this immediately is due to the fact that the DPW contract does not expire until the end of 2013, meaning that we cannot privatize until 2014. In addition to this, I've researched other surrounding communities. In other communities where refuse collection is privatized, fees to pick up garbage is much higher on an annual basis. In some communities, the cost to pick up garbage is about $3 per bag. Therefore, if one were to take the average family who has two bags of garbage, on average, the cost to pick up garbage would be $6 per week. $6 per week multiplied by 52 weeks in a year equates to $312. With this being said, in this scenario, the average family would end up paying more than the garbage fee every year, even if they only had two bags of garbage per week. If a family had three bags of garbage per week, at an average of $3 per bag, this would equate to $9 per week. When multiplying this by 52 weeks, it would equate to $468 per year. Both scenarios would equate to an average family or person, for that matter, actually paying more for garbage pickup than the current city fee. A fourth question that was asked to me is why we can't just privatize the sewer authority? The answer to this is very complex. First of all, many requirements would have to be agreed upon for this to happen. For instance, the mayor would have to approve to, to privatize the sewer authority, which we currently do not have. In addition to this, the board of the Scranton Sewer Authority would have to agree to dissolve the authority and sell themselves, which we currently do not have, since they're all the mayor's appointees. Third, we would not need to get the agreement of Dunmore to dissolve the authority, which would be an unknown as to whether we would, would, we would get it or not. Fourth, there are many mandates that need to be made under the Chesapeake Bay Federal Mandates that the Scranton Sewer Authority is currently making. The cost of these mandates is, is, is extremely high, which is the reason that sewer rates have been on the rise by the authority. If the sewer authority was sold, sewer rates could rise by an even greater amount. 
fifth, the sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority would not bring in a windfall of cash that would be needed to cover all expenses. In the past, when the Sewer Authority was sold, the city only received $5 million in upfront money, which would only put a dent into the projected three-year deficit before mandates of over $41 million. Fifth, a question was asked to me, why does the city even need a recovery plan in the first place? In response to this question, the city needs a recovery plan because lending institutions are now requiring it in order to provide financing to the city. In meetings that I have attended with local lending institutions in the past, Pell has been present. In these meetings, Pell has stressed the importance of a revised recovery plan as being a method of assurance that the city could pay, pay them back. Because of Pell's persuasion, a revised recovery plan is being required by just about all lending institutions that the city is dealing with at the current time. At this point in time, without a revised recovery plan, the city would not be able to secure budgeted financing. This would mean that the city would basically fall into an abyss. Employees would not be paid, debt service obligations would not be paid, and we would default and the city most likely would not be able to secure any type of financing that, that it needs in the future. As one knows, a revised recovery plan that was jointly constructed by the administration and members of council was constructed and voted on for introduction at the August 2nd Scranton City Council meeting. Also, as one knows, Pell had raised some concerns regarding the revised recovery plan and rejected the plan in its current state, thus requiring several revisions to be made. There were several changes to the revised recovery plan by the administration over the past two weeks. These changes were, all the changes made were primarily made by the administration to accommodate Pell's requirements. To begin, the changes made to the revised recovery plan by the administration are as follows. Number one, first, the baseline projection of operating revenue was changed from $61,226,457 to $61,736,457 in 2013. This is primarily due to the um, Geisinger expansion project that they wish to undertake that Mr. McGowan mentioned earlier. Subsequently, the baseline projection of operating revenue was changed from $62,226,457 to $60,986,457 in 2014. Along with this, the baseline projection of operating revenue was changed from $63,226,457 to $61,132,824 in 2015. Secondly, the baseline projection of all operating expenses changed from $62,738,986 million seven hundred forty six thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars in 2013. Subsequently the baseline projection of operating expenses changed from seventy million nine hundred eighty three thousand six hundred fourteen to seventy one million nine hundred eighty three thousand six hundred fourteen dollars in 2014. Along with this the baseline projection of operating expenses changed from seventy one million $540,569 to $72,532,596 in 2015. This was primarily due to um, the, uh, the rise in operating expenses is due to the fact that the revised recovery plan calls for refinancing in 2013 and in 2014 with the Supreme Court award and other debt service requirements there would be extra expenses in, in terms of debt service. After changes to the baseline projections for re revenue and expenditures, the current year deficit before mandates changed by the administration to $2,010,331 in 2013. 
For the same reason, the administration changed the current year deficit before mandates to $10,997,157 in 2014 and $11,399,772 in 2015. Overall, the total deficit before mandates and cash outflows was reported as $41,577,469 by the administration. Third, the current year deficit changed from $4,825,937 to $7,725,937. The reason why this changed was due to, to the city not being able to refinance debt soon enough to maximize the full savings involved with refinancing, which was originally dictated by Mayor Doherty and Business Administrator Ryan McGowan to be $6.4 million. Fourth, the amount of unfunded borrowing was increased for this year due to the fact that the city did not refinance debt in time to maximize the full $6.4 million savings that could have been realized by refinancing earlier in the year. Fifth, the DCD grant was changed by the administration from $250,000 to $750,000. In meeting with Business Administrator Ryan McGowan, Mayor Doherty, and Councilwoman Evans, Mayor Doherty expressed that he was going to petition DCED to make the grant that they are offering $750,000 rather than $250,000. In speaking yesterday with Ryan McGowan, he expressed that the city, city would still be receiving $2.25 million from the state, except that instead of paying back $1 million, the city would pay back $500,000 instead. Sixth, the commuter tax revenue projection for 2013 was decreased from $4 million to $2.5 million. It was a requirement of Pell that the projection for the commuter tax be reduced for year one due to a lag that can occur in the collection of this new tax. Seventh, the projection for the repayment of unfunded borrowing from 2011 was changed by the administration from $2.1 million to $1.8 million for 2013, 2014, and 2015. This pr projection was confirmed as appropriate by Pell because um, in speaking with Ryan McGowan, he, he also uh, stated that since we wouldn't be looking to borrow from the pension fund, we would be looking at obtaining a lower interest rate. Eighth, the projection for the repayment of the unfunded debt from 2012 was changed from $882,981 to $1,050,000 for 2013 and 2014. This was due to the city not being able to refinance debt soon enough to maximize the full savings that could have been realized this year. <clears throat> Ninth, the additional firefighters line was changed by the administration to $700,000 in 2014 and $1.5 million in 2015. This figure was determined to be okay by Pell. As to the cost that the city would uh, will be incurred to maintain the amount of firefighters that we have now after the safer grant ceases. Tenth, the increase to the MMO was changed from $5.5 million to $5.1 million. According to a study by Thomas Anderson, who calculates the MMO for the city's empl city employees' pensions, it was determined that the MMO increase would be $5.1 million in 2013 and 2014. We will not know what the increase to the MMO will be in 2015 until 2014 occurs, since they only do it on a two-year period. However, it was estimated by the administration that the MMO increase would still be $5.1 million higher than it is now. Overall, after all changes were made, the tax increases were changed by the administration if the sales tax is realized and passed by the legislature to 11.91% in 2013, which is a court-ordered tax increase associated with unfunded borrowing that was approved by the Court of Common Pleas in 2011. 
a 9.63% tax increase in 2014 and a 14.34% tax increase in 2015. And that's all I have for tonight. And thank you, Councilman Joyce. Good evening. Earlier this week, Councilman Joyce and I met with State Senator John Blake to discuss the pressing financial issues facing our city and its people and to enlist his help. Unfortunately, Senator Blake is unable to assist Scranton in the short term since the Senate does not return to session until September 24th and thereafter very few legislative dates remain during the fall of 2012. In addition, Republican legislators stated recently that they will entertain no legislation following the forthcoming November election. Rather, they prefer to use those valuable weeks for what is termed housekeeping duties. Nevertheless, Senator Blake will research new taxes proposed by city government, among other revenue generators, and will pursue financial relief for Scranton and support from colleagues and related groups that share our financial burdens in the long term. We also discussed municipal bankruptcy with Senator Blake. He firmly believes that it is not an option for our city and we should do whatever is necessary to survive the current short-term financial crisis. Further, he stated that no city that entered bankruptcy, to his knowledge, has ever escaped full payment of bonds and that the Pennsylvania courts are quite different than those of California in which three cities recently declared bankruptcy. Additionally, Senator Blake warned against the long-term consequences of bankruptcy, particularly the resulting loss of city services. Legacy costs, court decisions, and tax-exempt properties have trapped our city in a financially confined space. However, Senator Blake feels the shackles could be removed with state legislation. Unfortunately, this is a long-term solution which doesn't address the immediate problems. Further, the longer a city remains distressed, the more power appears to be given over to the state. According to Senator Blake, this is a distortion of the intention of Act 47, as the state's power should diminish in time. Yet DCD, DCED and Pell appear to exercise an ever-growing grip on Scranton, one that has nearly destroyed our city. Next. I wish to comment on the latest newspaper articles concerning the appointment of a receiver and the Scranton Parking Authority Board meeting. Scranton City Council had neither input nor knowledge of the appointment of Mr. Washoe as receiver. Rather, we had been hoping for the appointment of an independent individual or firm from outside Lackawanna County or even the state. The announcement was as colossal a surprise to council as it was to city residents. Nevertheless, Mr. Washoe has a weighty burden on his shoulders to restore public confidence in the Scranton Parking Authority, and we wish him well. The Parking Authority has been anything but a bare bones operation. It was not until after the June 1st, 2012 default that Mr. Scopoletti's $150 monthly car expenses were cut, bloated management salaries were reduced, and the former SPA solicitor's clear conflict of interest mandated his replacement. Further, the SPA failed to cure the four or five events of default by the July 9, 2012 den uh, deadline, thereby placing it into receivership. To date, it still has no 2012 budget because the 2011 approved and amended budget was violated 
and the 2012 budget presented to City Council was neither approved nor adopted. These budgets appeared to be cursory at best and an attempt to obfuscate financial information at worst. If the board members had serious doubts or reservations concerning the ability of the parking garages to meet financial obligations, they could have and should have voted against construction of new garages. When this $35 million borrowing was brought before City Council, I had the financial sense to vote no and insist that the owners of the Connell Building construct the adjacent garage at their own cost. In addition, free parking spaces in various garages should never have been doled out. Therefore, I don't believe that any city funds should be used to make SPA bond payments while the current management team remains employed. Under such circumstances, the garages will need to be sold to drive down debt and interest payments. The city cannot afford to support this mess as it currently stands. A professional operator should be hired. And finally, I have citizens requests for the week. The area under the bridge on Luzerne Street between Meridian and Railroad Avenues was not cleaned. I visited the site this week and noticed bottles and garbage strewn throughout the area and dirt covered half of the sidewalks on the left side traveling down from Meridian Avenue. In addition, a large no parking sign is broken and lying in the dirt. Please address as soon as possible. Residents of the 500 block of Schultz Court wish to know when the condemned buildings in the court are scheduled for demolition since they were informed that the work would be performed this summer. Please provide City Council with the date on or before August 23rd, 2012. And that's it. Madam President, if I could just, since it's Grand Parking Authority Night, uh, I'd like to chirp in on, on two things. Uh, one issue that, the, that Mr. Washoe has no control over is the cooperation agreement between the city and the Scranton Parking Authority, uh, which is whereby they employ the meter people. We reimburse the Parking Authority for their payroll, and the Parking Authority gets 10 percent of all revenues collected. Um, that is not in the consent order because that was never a contract that was pledged to the trustee on any of the bond issues. I have been informed that the 10 percent management fee that the Scranton Parking Authority gets has been assigned to Landmark Bank to pay the note that the Scranton Parking Authority has. Um, I believe that the amount of the 10 percent, we call it the VIG, that the Scranton Parking Authority gets uh, is around $100,000 a year. And now that Mr. Washer would have control of all the revenues of the Parking Authority except the money that the Parking Authority gets from the city, the 10 percent, on what's collected, um, the parking authority will remain in business. And of course, they could use that 10 percent to pay salaries and payroll of Mr. Scopoletti and other people. Um, I would suggest that council review the cooperation agreement. There's a clause in there that we can terminate that agreement within 30 days. That we look at it to terminate that agreement, which would mean that all the meter people would have to come back on the city payroll. We're paying for them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes out of the parking revenue that, from the meters. Yes. Uh, I, I think that this should be looked at. I'm recommending the council look at it and determine if that cooperation agreement should be terminated and the meter people be brought back as employees of the city where it would go in the budget and how the budget would be amended. That would all have to be in the ordinance uh, terminating 
the cooperation agreement. Uh, that's my recommendation on that, uh, and I think that, you know, take some time to look at it and consider what we do, and I'll draft the legislation on that to terminate that agreement and bring all those people back, all those employees back in-house. Very good. The second thing, and I don't have the paper, so I'm going here from memory. Um, I read with interest Mr. Tunis's comments uh, that were in the paper this morning uh, regarding the Scranton Parking Authority meeting last night, that the SPA relied upon consultants' feasibility studies regarding the financing, the financial solvency of each of the garage projects, um, and that they had sufficient projected revenues to pay the operating expenses and amortize the debt services. Um, I would recommend that council direct that a letter be written. I don't know who the chairman of the parking authority is, uh, but I know Mr. Tunis, he's an attorney, he's a board member, um, that we write a letter to the SPA to have them furnish to council all feasibility studies that the SPA had and relied upon for the financing of the new garage in the 100 block of Adams Avenue uh, next to the Hilton Hotel and the new garage at the corner of Adams and Lackawanna. I don't know the names of the garage. I don't know if they're the Medallion and the Casey garage, but everybody knows the garages I'm talking about. And also the uh, new garage in the 100 block of Washington Avenue next to the Connell Building. Uh, all of those feasibility studies and also any feasibility studies that they had um, regarding any f refinancing. I, I don't know when these bond issues, if there was refinancing of existing bonds that were rolled into the financing of these new garages. Um, they say they relied on these feasibility studies, that they were accurate. Well, if they are, why is there a $2 million hole? Mm -hmm. um, so that we could take a look at them and there's, I don't know who did them, but there might be a legal liability here uh, for the city to file a lawsuit it's going to be a question whether it's the city is the guarantor of those of the is the guarantor of those bonds. I believe would have standing to file a lawsuit to sue any consultant uh, that provided these studies if they're not accurate. I, this is not an easy lawsuit, but if, as Attorney O'Brien says, that the city's on the hook for two million dollars for the next 23 years, that's 46 million dollars. Um, I certainly think that somebody should be taking a serious look as to who did these feasibility studies, how they were done, whether they're accurate, and if they're not, litigation should be instituted. And thank you, Attorney Hughes. Mrs. Craik, if you can confer with our solicitor tomorrow and draft and send that letter on behalf of Scranton City Council, please. <coughs> 5B, Ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing W. Boyd Hughes, Esquire, and Paul A. Kelly, Jr., Esquire, as special counsel to the City of Scranton and Case Con Capital, Incorporated, as co-financial advisor to the City of Scranton on the issuance and placement of any bonds, notes, or financing of the City of Scranton's unfunded debt or refinancing or refunding of any of the city's outstanding bond issues and 2012 tax anticipation note B and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with Case Con Capital Incorporated. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, authorizing the disbursement of funds from Scranton's Office of Economic and Community Development to UDAG repayment checking account number 56-202174-9, entitled Urban Development Action Grant Repayment Account said funds to be utilized for final payments due and owing with respect to work performed regarding the Crisp Avenue Bridge project. 
At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The aye. ayes have it and so moved. 5D, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials for the city of Scranton to enter into a grant agreement between the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency and the Scranton Police Department for the federal fiscal year 2009 buffer zone protection program and accept grant funding in the amount of $27,685.91. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a design and construction inspection services contract with Riley Associates to provide design and construction inspection services for the construction work for the project entitled Reconstruction of the City Streets to Include Handicapped Curb Cuts. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 50, 2012, an ordinance, amending file of council number 56, 2011, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2012 by transferring $178,000 from account number 01401 one three zero nine zero four two nine nine non-departmental operating expenses contingency to the accounts listed below to provide funding for life disability insurance payments through the period ending December 31st 2012 you've heard reading by title of item 6a what is your pleasure I move that item 6a pass reading by title second on the question all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved. Six. I, <clears throat> I would like to make a motion to take file of council number 49, 2012 from the table. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title. File of Council Number 49, 2012, an ordinance previously tabled, amending the revised recovery plan for the City of Scranton pursuant to the Financially Distressed Municipalities Act and authorizing the Mayor of the City of Scranton to issue an order directing the implementation of the revised recovery plan dated August 1, 2012, attached hereto as Exhibit A, in accordance with the provisions of Section 245 of the Financially Distressed Municipalities Act. You've heard reading by title of Item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that Item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, I, I think I made my opinions on the plan clear two weeks ago. Um, just vote on it, I guess. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Community Development for Adoption, Resolution Number 35, 2012, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic 1147, the Hideout. Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania, for removal of existing awning cover and installation of new black synthetic vinyl material awning with vinyl lettering, with no change to the frame dimension, height, and location specifications at 410 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of Item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Time's up. <laughs> yes. Um, Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 
seven B for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number thirty six, two thousand twelve, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the certificate of appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic eleven forty seven the Hideout, Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania for the installation of a custom-made, double-sided, sandblasted, and carved HDU sign panel, 48 inches high by 42 inches wide by 2 <coughs> inches, mounted on a custom wrought iron bracket with brass end caps at 410 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 37, 2012, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic, 1147 The Hideout, Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania, for removal of existing awning cover and installation of new black synthetic vinyl material awning with logo and shades of green and white with no change to the frame dimension height and location specifications at 406 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. I would like to make a motion to take file of council number 48, 2012 from the table. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, file of council number 48, 2012, previously tabled. Amending file of council number 83, 2009, file of council number 40, 2010, and file of council number 53, 2011, entitled, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the community development block grant program, home investment partnership program, an emergency shelter grant program by transferring $480,320.84 from the Neighborhood Police Patrol 10-96, Neighborhood Police Patrol 11-96, and Neighborhood Police Patrol Vehicles 11-96.2, to Project 12-04, Reconstruction of Roads and Handicapped Curb Cuts. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.